Yeah, that, I feel like that's a good one <laughs> for tonight. Here we go, I will start the music and we can go down the line starting with this track. Oh, that's an interesting one. Oh, two sessions. Go. Hmm. I wouldn't. I would have had a hard time there. Now, Isakura. He has the person who important. Her. Yeah, I mean. I I'm sure there's plenty of people that are jealous of Sakura. What about you? you know, I don't think she really wants anything. She's kind of happy with what she has. She's, uh, you know, she's got her wibbly wobbly warlock powers now. Um, yeah, she doesn't really want anything. She's pretty happy on, uh, right now. <laughs> warlock powers and a broomstick. That's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> Fly above the battlefield, uh, many people can't touch you, it's easy. <laughs> but yeah, she, she wants stuff, but not stuff, uh, particularly stuff from the party. I'll put it that way. Yeah, that's cool. What about Elias? I feel like he's <laughs> he's probably got some thoughts. On that. Oh boy. He wants Jin's broom. <laughs> you know what? Almost. <laughs> Well, he feels a bit inadequate in his mobility, and he would really like to be able to use dimension four, but oh well. So pretty much just about every magic user. Okay, yeah, I can see Elias being like, damn, should have studied magic this. <laughs> Thought it was useless, but yeah, they are this. Kids that have really got something going for them. Damn, oh, and also college. Chakra, because technically her investigation is better than mine. <laughs> yeah, again, I mean, because of the stupidly fancy, like, artifact that she carries around, it's, <laughs> I think yeah. that's, that's probably a, a big point there. What about Seto? Is he, I mean, he's just gotten back, I don't even know. Probably a... Envious? Probably in Jerry. How can a fucking small creature be so strong? He would want some of that, some of that strength, but... Okay, it is what it is. Yeah, and with that, uh, I have once again not written a recap, but last time... You were basically, um, as you left the Titan Forge, you were surrounded by Crane Clan Samurai, who seemed intent on arresting you. And rather than picking a fight with them, uh, you surrendered and you went along with their orders, especially after the Daimyo arrived and um, explained to you all that there would probably be a trial in the morning and that you would be taken somewhere to be held overnight which some of you were probably thankful for just to get the rest. And so you were all escorted through the crane clan, the, the steel crane smithy, where you were taken past all the, the manufacturers of katana here and into the mountain where there was a destroyed bridge that it seemed like it had recently been destroyed by the lava rising in this mountain and... It was filled with Ifriti, but not only Ifriti, there was a Baylor who seemed, they all seemed to be searching for something in there. And when you all approached, the Baylor teleported to where you were standing and the fight began. As you all made a valiant effort to get your manacles off and escape through the, uh, well, not really escape, beat the living shit out of everything in the room and kill them <laughs> all, uh, except for, I think, one of one or two of the Afriti that managed to plane shift out of there. You managed to defeat the Baylor and all of them and make your way into the next room where there was a fire... Oh, well, you don't know that it was a fire giant necessarily, but there was a giant who works the forge here 
who Estrella had sort of called over to try and help, but it seemed like he couldn't actually fit through the door. The samurai that was leading you through here also managed to survive the fight, although he seemed a little bit shell-shocked when you walked in and when he first saw the Baylor. He also noted that the elevator he was supposed to be bringing you to was destroyed and had fallen into the lava. The chains were destroyed, and now the way up to the prison cells that are supposedly above you uh, seems to have been blocked. Though, as you are now all entering this room where the, the giant and his anvil are, you will see that there are two more elevators in the ceiling of this room, and it is a large, empty space. There, there seems to have been some destruction here as well, but you can see the, the giant has just made his way back over to his anvil as you are all making your way into this room. What would everyone like to do? Jin will would be walking next to the uh, samurai and going, you know, this is why we're innocent. Like we always just attract danger, but for some reason we always stop the danger. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> he sort of shrugs and says, "Well, you definitely don't seem to be working with the elementals, but that is not for me to decide. Don't worry, I'm." I'm sure your trial will bring out the truth. And he's sort of pushing his way into the, the room as he's speaking to you. Uh, what is the process of this trial again? If you don't mind me asking. Is it what is well, the truth or something like that? We bring out, uh, make sure we tell the truth or something. Uh, magical means will be employed if necessary, but... If you are all cooperative, then there will be no need for such thing. You will be taken to the courthouse, and you will speak to a jury that will decide your fate. You must understand that arson is a very serious crime, and triggering the volcanic eruption that would most likely destroy most of Tatuan is not something that will be taken lightly. However, with the presence of the Baylor, there may be more to this than we first thought, so just sit tight, behave yourselves, and I'm sure you will all be released soon enough. Understood? And he just turns and looks at all of you in turn. He gives out a big sign and says, fine, she will take a seat over here. <laughs> He nods and he says, all right, and thank you. If you hadn't broken yourselves out of your manacles there, I don't think I would have made it through that myself. I will not forget that. And he just sort of awkwardly turns around and starts making his way towards the giant. And he says, uh, good sir, it seems the elevator outside has been broken and infested with demons. The giant just barely nods and, says, and just points to the to the chains that you can now see are sort of linked to the giant cog wheels that are built into the floor of this chamber. Um, and he says, use those if you need. Are these the ones that opened the forge? And he just nods and looks back at you and says, well, we think so. What is everyone doing in here as these two start talking to each other? Yeah, again, Jin is just uh, taking a seat on those stairs over there. Giant will start taking these slow, lumbering steps across the chamber as he, he starts making his way towards the, the cogwheel that's just sort of behind you there, June. Thank you. And yeah, as, as he sort of walks up to it, he just passes over you. You, you can see that 
but he looks a lot less oh i don't know he looks quite a lot more refined than than the other giants that you've seen but as he gets close you can definitely just see that he's got quite a hell of a lot of power just in the the size of the hammer that he's holding But doesn't seem aggressive at all. He just moves over towards this giant cog and he stands waiting. Or well, he doesn't stand waiting, he just starts turning it, and you will see one of these platforms starting to lower. Yeah, Jean just looking at this giant and she's just looking, looking, and says, You're a cloud giant by any chance? <clears throat> No, I was Fire Giant once, but it has been a long time. This forge has been my home for... And he just shrugs centuries. Hmm, usually don't you, you Fire Giants seem to have like either fiery red hair or something along these lines? He holds up the, the hammer in his hand, and as he sort of waves it over you, you see that the, the air just around it is is like a, sort of misty, like there is, there is this cold sort of fog coming off of his hammer. And he says, If I let this go for too long, I would probably get it back, but the beard's out for now. Oh, illusion magic. I did not expect them to have that. Well, this is also good for quenching the blades. Not much water in here since the forge was closed. Are you the ones who opened it? Indeed. Uh, well, accidentally. Well, no, well, not completely accidentally. Well, one, someone did something and then someone did another thing and, well, it kind of blew up. <laughs> <sighs> Odd to accidentally stumble upon a phoenix egg. But it is good to hear that the clans are getting along with the elementals again. And you just, you see this platform now thump down onto the, the top of the stairs there as the samurai goes in and stands on, on top of it. He says, oh, don't listen to the old fool. The titans were built to destroy the elementals. Uh, we've told you this a thousand times. And he just, the, the giant just shakes his head as he stands ready to move the platform again. As he mentions, uh, getting rid of the egg and all that, I just, uh, Jin just gives a look towards uh, Seto. <laughs> Are you guys able to move and stuff there, or is it...? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just checking. Um, yeah, so what are Seto and Australia doing on that side? Well, Seto would just be near Sakura and tending if he needs anything, but he's still be just talking to Fu and just trying to take in as much as information possible. Okay, yeah, Sakura is badly hurt. I, I assume that at this point she's probably, like, asleep in your arms, that you'll just be carrying her in. Sure. So, yeah, wherever you want to move, I'll move Sakura with you until she can join us. Are we able to get a short rest while we're waiting in here, or not? Uh, no, but they are um, sending you up to somewhere where you can take a long rest. Ah, perfect. That's kind of the, the point. They, um, so yeah, they, they're they just sort of standing on an elevator waiting for everyone to come and stand on here so that he can move you uh, up to the holding cells. There seems to be a prison inside the mountain that they are, are putting you into. But the, the giant does seem 
curious and seems to be disagreeing with the samurai about their history. So is everyone getting on the lift? Ah, uh, yes. <sighs> Everybody is. They're like up and so little one much cobalt. Staff and his step to like steady herself. Then reach the just picks up her book and sits on it. The giant will start turning the, the thing as you step onto the, the platform and as it's sort of raising to about chest height he'll, he'll say well, did you harvest the bay lord or the ifriti yet the samurai just shakes his head like throwing his hands up in the air like no obviously not do any of you respond that sounds uh, above Jean's pay, uh, pay grade. <laughs> they can be harvested? What the fuck? He just keeps turning the thing and he says, Oh yes, Baylor blood. This is good for a lot, you know. And I think the skin too. And as he says that, you, you just go through the ceiling and the sound sort of cuts out as you are all uh, hoisted up onto uh, into the next level. And as we are moving... As we are changing maps, I'll point out that, uh, thanks to Danny, I've got a cool system for actually harvesting um, bits of the beasts to use as spell components that will basically like buff your spells when you cast them using oh. those components. At the uh, Hemigwig. Yeah, maybe. I can't, I can't remember now. It, but, it has um, like a dwarf on it. Like, it looks uh, like Explorer and it's really a dwarf. Orange. Possibly, I can't. I've read so many of these things this week, but um, but it's got basically for when I put a monster in. If you guys want to try and harvest it, there there will be a specialized loot for certain creatures and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, for now, obviously, you guys are kind of not in it position to be doing that. So okay, there's a cannon that the guards told us that. So you just don't have to repeat like in character. Yeah, yeah, well I mean you can say that you're sort of discussing this as you're heading up, but also Jerry I think has actually been researching some of these things, so in character he's probably the one that actually has this information. Great. But yeah, the rest of you, I mean, you would also, as a as a smith yourself, you'd probably have a decent idea that magical creatures generally can be used to make magical items and weapons and things. Like, it's not, it's not hard to know that, you know, like a, a dragon scale might have some draconic magic. Not okay, so, uh, he... You haven't? Oh, good thing we got a couple now. Uh, mostly firebrands. All right. Well, you all seem to have been cooperative so far, and quite frankly, after seeing the way you fought in there, I don't think chaining you up is going to be of much use. There's no getting out of this place, so. Let's not even try it. Just sit here, wait until we call you again, and I'm sure we'll get this all cleaned up soon enough. And he starts unlocking the first of these cells. Uh, Dibs. Is... Okay, you're taking the first one. Yeah. All right, then I'm just going to pop it in there. I'll take the second one. I'm going to uh, separate the, the cells so you'll be in this one. 
Yeah, can't be too careful. Yeah, it's the yeah. same thing as next to each other. We'll totally stop it from getting out if we ever tried. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's in. <laughs> well, honestly, it's more about maintaining the walls. People try drilling holes to talk to each other. It's, this takes too much mending. I mean, he, he just seems tired after his fight with <laughs> the bailer. It doesn't seem like he's up for this shit right now. It is six o'clock in the morning by this point. Yeah. And when, he's when, he been said, up when he said this is, Junior uh, said, yes, two, uh, two layers of walls are definitely going to stop us from talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to fly one of my paper birds to one of you and just says, fuck you. Who will oh, yeah. His voice appears you in your head and she says, fuck you back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking soccer with me. Yeah, he'll he'll let you take. Oh, uh, are you trying to take into the same cell? Yes. All right, I'll say give me give me an a persuasion or an intimidation check because Sakura is so badly hurt at this point that he's like, yeah, she could probably use some medical attention. Intimidation or persuasion? They both suck. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Well, here goes nothing. That would be religion. You're trying to intimidate him with Jesus Christ. Yep, that kind of sucks. Expected. He, goes, he sighs and he goes, oh, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. But I'll put her in the cell next to yours. And when she wakes up, at least you'll be able to hear her. Don't worry, I'm sure she'll sleep it off just fine. I'll grudgingly coughing and just I'll put her I won't let her touch her, I'll just put her in the next cell and then move out and go into the other one. Okay, cool, yeah, he'll let you assist with that and Sokka will be put in the cell next to you. Intimidation. All right, who's next? He. Okay, so Australia, are you going in the the last two cells or the one that he's at now? Because. He sort of steps, as soon as he's finished locking you all in, in your cells, he goes, all right, try and get some rest. I think you're probably going to need it, but I'll see you all in a few hours. And he just starts heading back towards the stairs. Do we still have shackles? No. No, he hasn't shackled you and he hasn't even taken your equipment. He's just accepting that you guys are are willing to stay there. This is just a holding cell situation. Okay, I'll I, uh, the Not to escape, but just out of curiosity, I'm gonna try and lockpick the door. <laughs> <laughs> just to see how my skills are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can give it an attempt. Let's find a path. As to make a check with your um, thieves' tools, if you've got thieves' tools, I assume you do. Yep. Uh, 
here as you as you try you you realize this is one hell of a lock like they they definitely don't want you getting out of here and the the metal that this the entire thing is made of seems it would seem strange to you had you not been in that turret earlier today it seems like it's made of the same stuff as that um the metal in that titan forge and you are unable to pick it with that There's also, I mean, an element of just, you might be too tired to actually even be doing this. I think you would have that at disadvantage, yeah, actually, actually but, <laughs> but there's like a, a while where you're just you're busy picking the lock and your arm's getting too tired to do it, and it's like, you know what? Yeah, so it would have, yeah, it would have been 20 anyway. Yeah, so you feel like if you were on your game, you might, you might be able to get through this thing, but... Right now, the sleep is calling. Uh, not at all. As you are moving away from the lock, though, there's a chill that sort of runs up your spine, and you you feel like something just walked past the the bars. But as you turn around and look over your shoulder, there's nothing there. Mm. Must yeah. have been the wind. <laughs> I don't think wind just walked past you. Jim, do, uh, Jim doesn't give a shit and is napping. <laughs> well, Pepper just wake up from like six months of nap or whatever the hell it seems like. So she's just gonna cower to his back, find some pipe and just smoke some good shit that she, you know, got way back. And just like relax. Oh yeah, and that you do. I mean, well deserved at, <laughs> at this point, and what a day to come back to. Is everyone gonna settle down for a, a long rest then? Uh, so quickly, mm -hmm. one thing. Um... Can I use my wand of magic detection on the lock? Uh, yeah, you you can absolutely. Um, uh, oh yeah, crap! I, I forgot to put your crossbow on foundry, but just just remember that because that crossbow is actually much better than the one you have. Uh, that though, it was detect magic. The um. The bars will begin to glow, and you'll see. I think it's enchantment magic. I'm I'm not entirely sure, but the, it has a glow on it that it seems like it would um, possibly prevent abjuration. Abjuration is. Yeah, then it it might be that one. Abjuration to um, the same as what is a wall of force. <clears throat> that, well, anyway. That's that you do see that these bars um, are made of some sort of magical material, and that they probably have some sort of properties that prevent magic being used on them. But you're not sure entirely what. That would take more something more like an identifier. Evocation. <clears throat> oh, I don't feel safe anymore. <laughs> And then I'll just go to sleep, uh, cradling my uh, warding crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> I love how yeah, no, Lyle is the only one worried while Rest of the Fire is like, eh, it's just another Eldritch thing in the, in the <laughs> skull. Well, yeah, I mean, Elias kind of mechanically has like paranoia. <laughs> As a high level rogue, you literally have like. That's kind of why you you felt that is this anything that moves magical. around you you're ultimate you're ultra aware of. Well, I, I have think a magical we'll... crossbow that <laughs> beacons in higher. Sounds like when you kill people in one point. 
Okay, buddy, look. I killed just as many people as you do. Don't pretend like I'm the worst person here just because I'm a rogue. But I think... Uh... Buddy. Three? Maybe five. <laughs> Alright, whatever, it's fine. Time, time to sleep. <laughs> cool. So, who's. Yeah, you guys can go and go ahead and do a long rest if, for everyone that is sleeping. I mean, I suppose you don't have to technically be sleeping. There's, like, I know Australia is probably. Actually, what are you doing, Australia? Are you reading through the night? Or... Always. In the middle of the night, Australia has. You you can hear, Jerry snoring two cells down, and uh, across the way you hear. Sakura mumbling in her sleep and Seto, you hear this as well and like she's she's complaining just in her sleep in her breath just like oh shut up stop the music and she just that's just what you you vaguely hear through through the bars but you don't hear any music does it sound like Dangerous or just mumbling, rambling? Like, do I sense like just a ramble, or is she like worried or something? You can give me an insight check. Sure. I'm actually good at that. Shit. Uh, and of course, I fucking. Mm. Yeah, no, 15 is enough for you to know that it sounds like there's, it sounds like someone's disturbing her sleep. Like, um, it, it sounds like someone's making a noise and she's just being woken from it and is telling them to shut up. It doesn't sound like she's in trouble. It might just be a dream, but it sounds like she's shouting at one of you. Like maybe June or Australia was playing music and she was just getting annoyed by it, but... There's definitely no music in here. I'll just keep an eye. I'm not gonna do anything, but that's weird as fuck. June, during the night, your dreams get pretty wild. Um, <laughs> Saw that coming from a mile away. <laughs> yeah. There's, we're not gonna go into the a full like a dream sequence tonight but i i can tell you i think you can probably even come up with what's going on in in june's head as there are there are many new new things to meet in your dreams shall we put it that way uh, <laughs> you're not entirely sure what they are if they are even um real if they are people it, like consciousness is it's a very confusing first night um, under the influence of your new warlock abilities, but would you like to describe to me what you think June would be experiencing as um, she starts to see glimpses of her patron better than she has, ever has before? You know, kind of like how when you're in a dark room and there's thunder outside? Yeah, so there's like um, just that basically flashing images of what um, of her patron that she just sees and that's that's what's happening throughout her dream it's quite quite irritable but <laughs> June isn't uh, too surprised by it she's kind of prepared herself for it already um, so she she gets on with it tries to get as much sleep as she can um, probably getting woken up a couple times during the night uh, June's not going to be um, leaving her but yeah she was prepared for it, to say the least. You do see something that you weren't expecting in your dreams, though. And it is... It looks vaguely like like no face from Spirited Away. You know, that kind of a mask that just... Oh, yeah. 
and without without a corporeal body, just this long black sort of cloak with that mask on it. However, the mask is not the where the mouth is. Oh, it does actually have a mouth. I, <laughs> I thought it was mouthless, but this this one has got big like human teeth in it, and it is just standing there watching you in your dreams. It doesn't seem to be a part of the rest of these these visions. It just seems like some sort of an intruder in your your dreams for a while but it just seems to stand and watch hmm. okay all right that's uh worrying but june will um well, when she does wake up after um uh, after a long rest she will be taking down a, uh, some notes down in a journal as much as she can about everything that happened Okay, as Astraea and Seto, the, as you guys will be sort of the last ones to actually be aware of anything happening around here, I'd like you both to give me a wisdom saving throw, please. On save this, I mean fail, hopefully. Oh, uh, wait. I have a feature for this, I think. Diamond so Yeah. I just want to know if I have to know if I fail or not. Where the hell is this? It's on oh, the yeah. feature you can just... Yeah, so if I fail, I can spend a key point and try to do this again. But I have to take this second with it. Yeah. The, okay, so for this one, I'm going to say, give me an Arcana check because the the thing to actually make yourself not fail this, um, this is not this is sort of a passive thing. You guys are not really aware that you're making this save. Um, okay. So. Failing. <laughs> So, yeah, I know Arcana is not your strong suit, but that's that's why I said to interesting. Okay, with the thirteen, you you wouldn't even notice that anything's going on in here. It's it seems like your long rest goes completely uh, normally, but you guys do get you also sort of get the heebie-jeebies a little bit in this place. It seems like there's a good chance this place is haunted. You know that you've been in many sh like shrines and things that you've met some ghosts on your travels and in a prison like this there's probably been some bad things that have happened here but that's about all you you glean from it and it is perhaps not the best night's rest that you have had however Astraea you must be getting close to finishing that book by now surely how much have you still got to go Four? Okay, cool. Well, um, this long rest is going to last. You will get your, your full long rest uh, stats just because of the, the strain you've gone through today. You've all slept like you're dead. So the next six hours or so pass as as we're moving into the seventh hour uh Seshu returns and he he just walks in and he goes all right everyone up i think they're ready for you and he just walks in to make sure that everyone's actually still alive and before we carry on i just quickly want to find out if sakura is actually going to be joining us tonight because uh, there may have been something that her character has noticed in the scene <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
Um, but yeah, I think we'll do that re retroactively if we have to. But uh, yeah, for the rest of you, we could probably use another hour or so. But you're all pretty much all right as magically you have healed with the power of the long rest. And Seshu comes to let you all out of your cells. And is quite impressed that you've stayed there all night. Um, well, not all night, but all morning. And we'll begin letting you out. I think about mentioning that I'm uh, try to <laughs> lock take the door. <laughs> I reckon if I I actually did, I would. Uh, I would have told him just like, hey buddy, and I just walk out myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you would have, would have liked I am my, uh, the rogue character I used to play. <laughs> you mean the goblin? Just, just fuck with people. <laughs> this isn't the first time we've been in a prison, so. <laughs> True. I'd be surprised if it was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, actually, Elias, is it the first time you've been in prison? Strangely Ooh. enough, yes. That's <laughs> I've been in court many times, but never in prison. Ah, I see what he did. Basically got someone to in those that was to, what's called, like, testimony. Have a little swim with the fish. Escape. And also, um... <clears throat> She ever fucking runs the place. <laughs> I lived my entire life. So. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, we own that prison. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, in character, this is actually the Seshu that is, that is asking you this because when he comes in, he will greet you and, and say, Mr. Alder, it seems we've heard quite a bit about you as well. Perhaps it was a good thing you wound up in these cells tonight. And he will start making his way down the stairs once you're all out of your, your cells. To... Well, I'm not the man I once was. For better or for worse. Oh, Jesus Christ, my dog just farted. <laughs> oh, God, this is so bad. So for us, she's not almost dying anymore. Okay, uh, all right, so as you all make your way oh, down off of the map, uh, there we go. Um, yeah, we will sort of move forward. Is there anything else you guys want to do in the forge as you are being led out back into the, the town? Anyone you want to like stop by or, or visit, or shall we move straight back to the town now? I don't, I don't need no weapons. <laughs> a mine is my weapon. Yep. You will when you get to the um when you get to the entrance of the mountain. He will turn around and say, "I'm afraid you'll have to put these back on." Uh, I'm sure you understand and. He'll pull out the manacles again and ask for each of you to put them back on. Ah. 
<laughs> like a lump of all anti gods and shoot the barons up. So clearly he's locking me lock for them. <laughs> Makes you just make him manic up all the time. <laughs> Hmm, so I wonder what that god's doing. Hmm, rampage into a small village, converting people to cult, uh, cultists, something probably along those lines. Yeah. I feel like that'd be pretty close by and we'd hear about it. You couldn't well, you have gone didn't. that far, do you? I don't know. We are pretty, uh, um, well, we went pretty far out to sea, so I don't know where, um, we could have gone to. You guys are led on quite a ways through the the town. You sort of start heading through a part of the town where you, um, it seems quite busy. It's the middle of the day. People are going about their business, and there are many people in the city. Seto, now for the first time, you really actually get to see where you are and the size of the, the place that you are in. But uh, you are just being led through as a this little train of prisoners and heading towards the courthouse. On the way there, you get to the sort of square where there's a fountain and lots of people around. Are you, is anyone doing anything on the way or are you just following behind? Yeah, I've been led along, I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna keep an eye for any, any shady figures. Uh, you can do that. You can give me a perception check. Where? There it is. Uh, yeah, with the 22, you will actually see as you're, as you're walking along, you'll see quite a, a few people noticing you as you walk past just by the fact that you are in manacles and everything. Um, if you'd like to make a stealth check to hide the fact that you're a prisoner, you can try and do that, just to sort of hide them in the sleeves of your robes or something. Sorry, but um, the with that perception check, Elias, you will notice that there are a number of of people that they seem like they are possibly shinobi also with dyed white hair that have have been keeping a close eye on you in particular as you've been walking through um you get the impression they are quite possibly bounty hunters that are looking a little bit disappointed right now could i uh roll an inside check Yeah, what are you trying to see? <laughs> I'm trying to see exactly uh, what the... Uh, how do I word it? Intentions are? Mm. <laughs> I, I, I don't... I'm bad with the words. I just saw the gene that... The, the gifts that have been sent <laughs> and, and then that, <laughs> exactly what it looks like right now. Come and see the violence inherent in this system. <laughs> help, help, I'm being repressed. <laughs> Elias, what are, you, what are you trying to glean with this inside check? Are you trying to see if they're there to kill you or if they. Something like I just want to see. Uh... If I can find out what they're doing. Okay, yeah, you can roll an inside check. Oh, nice, alright. Yeah, you can see that these guys are, they are wearing armor similar to some of the guards and things that you've seen. And um, two of them have got a Daidoji armor, one of them has got a Kakita armor, which are two of the noble families here in Taton that you've, you've met a few of them before and there's 
you know that most clans have got shinobi as well, and they seem like they they have no intention of um, attacking you while you're in custody. But you can see a couple of them definitely look like they they know they've missed out on the bounty, and are curious as to why you're being taken by the government, because the person you're being led by is from the most noble family, the Doji family. So you can see that there's clearly a bit of uh, inter-family like rivalries going on, and you're probably glad that you're not the target as much as you would have been right now. Awesome. I'm just going to give them a a smug smile. You'll see them sort of exchange looks and just some of them mutter to each other and two of them storm off. They, though one of them does seem to actually follow behind and uh, follow you to the courthouse where outside the courthouse you can see that Z is standing there and she's sort of watching down the road nervously and as she sees you coming through the gates she just runs up to you guys and she goes oh, you, you guys okay oh, everything good they didn't they didn't hurt anyone oh you know just fighting off demons and then getting treated as prisoners again Baylor as well um don't forget that one well yeah but it's a demon isn't it yeah but the it's quite a big difference. They were all demons, but... Okay, one very big demon, then. Are you happy now? <laughs> you pretty <Yes>. soft demons. <laughs> yeah, Seshu will, will also say... Uh, actually, yeah, he's he's right. That Baylor is a demon, and demons don't tend to work with devils. Those are a kind of genie, if... If you're familiar with those, and the free tea, uh, they come from the plane of fire. I've not seen a Baylor like that since I was a child, especially not here. Something strange is going on, and he just um, he will start making his way to open the the doors to the courthouse. But you can see there are a couple of samurai now standing around, and um, he just waits for you to sort of make your way into the place. Uh, what kind of childhood did he have that he saw Baylor? <laughs> was raised by Baylor. Damn. No, I actually saw it in the same place, funnily enough. I, that's sort of why it took me a, a back earlier. I was not since I was a young trainee like yourselves. That is what you are, right? I think they're going to ask you a lot of questions about that in here. We got the order a bit mixed up, but in essence, yes. Have you had a reoccurring Baylor problem? Coincidence or curse? We'll have to see on the third time. If there's a third time. Okay, so I'm actually going to ask that maybe we take a quick break here because uh, Sakura just sent me a message and said she will be here uh, in about half an hour. So I think let's just give it 10 minutes. I'm just quickly going to put some extra things down on this here map and then we will we'll jump back into it. I don't want to miss too much of the session, especially sure. with Jerry not here as well. Okay. Yep, sounds good. But yeah, if anyone needs coffee or anything, uh, grab some now. <sighs> and maybe also, you yeah. might want to yeah. take a minute to think about your story, because Jerry was the one who opened the forge, and you guys are going to be have, are going to have to be the one speaking to them now. But I will say that. Um, you'll have advantage on all charisma checks in this next section from Jerry because he's not actually able to do anything. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> June is 
uh, while waiting around uh, where everything happened. He was, he says to his boss, hmm, I hope they don't ask us why, um, asking me why I wasn't at the fight. Uh, I could be a little bit, uh, you know. We got tired of waiting for you while you were out in town. <laughs> we just left. It's also true. But doesn't stop them from using my place. Magic against what? I beg your pardon? How can they use magic? Like, oh, there's tons of uh, different spells you can use to ex extract the information you need from somebody. Yeah, I learned a couple ways just smashing their shins, but, but I don't think the government can use that. There's also like healing from your toenails. Ramsey Bolton style? <laughs> Jeez, what has Seto been doing in that egg? <laughs> A lot of watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> watching Game of Thrones. Actually, I've been watching so many goddamn theories about the Elden Ring. It's insane. I'm just going to try and deliberately give as little information as possible because I don't feel comfortable lying. I'm just gonna be, I don't know what the fuck is going on. The best way to, to lie is to sort of tell the truth. That's the best way to do it. Like a false lie. to lie is, well in a court where cross-examining is a thing, is just to deliberately do the bare minimum in giving answers. Hmm. Either way, what, what are we gonna, you know, charge us for? Opening the forge? Being elementals, and we're gonna have to prove that we aren't. I, I, I would assume. So That's the laws... The, the law is an interesting thing because they are not um, clans have sort of got different ways that they deal with the law and the law is not actually something that you've necessarily seen written down but if you guys want to give me a history check to see why they might actually what they might be able to come at you for because there are no lawyers yeah? uh, <laughs> was that Elias of all people I <laughs> Look, I, I read a lot of uh, journals and shit, not law books. He means Dojin. Boy, what the? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. I'm, I'm just busy putting stuff down, so can you actually call out the walls for me? Yeah, He's fine. Is this a check for you? It's for... Um... To see how much you know about the law, basically. Ah, gotcha. Ah, 13. About average. Uh, and now one for... For Lyles. <laughs> Move. And that 20 for me. <laughs> God fucking die. Okay, yeah, so... <laughs> So Seto, you definitely know Estrella, you would you would know this as well. Um but <laughs> yes, yeah, Seto, you you may have almost been caught for this before. Um mm -hmm. arson is a very serious crime in especially in places where most of the buildings are made of paper. And the punishment for arson is usually being burned to death. Mm -hmm. I I honestly don't know if that's a real world fact, but I found that, it, and it it seemed to be making it like that's what they did in real world Japan. That seems a little bit extreme to me, but uh, sounds right. Just imagine if you was immune to fire, being like. Mm. Well, yeah, the uh, the Crane Clan might have slightly different options, 
but yeah, um, that's generally what happens if if you start a fire uh, in a city, is you are burned to death as punishment. Um, but there is also the fact that this they seemed angry about the the forge being opened, like it was like maybe you, it was like a breaking and entering kind of deal. But it seems like that forge was pretty ancient. It's not like it's not like he broke into someone's home. Um, yeah, arson seems to be the biggest possible crime that you you may have committed if you had actually caused the volcano to erupt. Like that's a whole bunch of natural disasters that you could have just caused there that might have wiped out the whole of Tatan. Dark room. Hmm. That's a lot of dice. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Actually, um, so I've nearly got them down. I wonder the if the best way to make a player sweat balls just roll a crap ton of dice for no reason. I wonder if the guilty uh, sentence for trying to erupt the volcanoes. To just have molten lava dumped on you, because even if you are fire resistant, eventually you'll just be crushed. Well, yeah, that's part of the. Also, I mean, <laughs> if they're gonna arrest you for being a phoenix, burning you alive is probably not gonna be the punishment <laughs> they use. <laughs> I mean, you could still be crushed, and molten lava is still just rock. Rock is pretty heavy. What Imagine if you're then not immune to budging damage? Sorry, what? If you're also immune to bludgeoning damage, just be... Well, you are one freaky being. <laughs> then you're a rock monster. Oh, sorry, a, a magma <laughs> monster. Okay, then just get stabbed or something. I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. What if you're Balder? You know, they're just gonna like stop trying to do these elaborate punishments and they're actually just going to hang you. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the other thing is like. <laughs> uh, well, you'll find out in this. Do you, what? Like, do you guys want to. Do you want to know what the punishment for rebelling against the Shogun is? <laughs> or was in Japan? Execution of some sort? Hanging from a hook? Oh no. Uh, all of the. So the, the Shogun's soldiers each take one pull on a saw blade across your neck like until you, they each take just one slice until your head is severed. Then <laughs> your your direct family is crucified. Your distant family have to become monks and <laughs> your your clan is abolished. <laughs> Rough. My I guy. can... Holy shit. I can fuck up Shiva. With that. <laughs> How do you? Well, yeah, I mean, as as people that were planning a rebellion not that long ago, just maybe you might want to be aware <laughs> of such things. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not really fast family fast. anymore. Not blood family. I think I can get away with this, saying I'm no family of theirs. Not of Shiva's. Mm -hmm. Not blood related, and uh, well, considering they try to get my head. Yeah, also bear in mind, blood relation isn't the only thing that determines your, you being part of a family. I mean, that's true, but they also don't have any sort of a desirable ties to me. I could weep. I, yeah, I, no, that, I that's weep. fair. I just mean, like, you might find that you walk into a city and meet a hundred people from the same family, but it's like, I, <laughs> they're not all blood related. Yeah.
Okay, so yeah, last thing as you're walking in, Z will say, All right, I, I told Sumihime she, she should be here soon, but just remember not to not to let them know that we're from the Blue Dragon Clan, all right? I, I, what's the Blue Dragon Clan? Exactly. I feel like that would be more suspicious if we pretended not to know. <laughs> What do you oh, know, else. man? Like, what do you know, Elias? For all you know, a spray could be a being that has been trying to change fate for two million years. Just... I just know the Blue Dragon can, 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 Clan exists. Say the Clan, 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 because that <laughs> sounds like a the cool Blue clan. Dragon Can, my favorite soda. Actually, Elias, you might be the only person that should stay honest in this this scenario. I don't think you've got all that much to actually hide. I mean, I think, I and Z just shrugs my... like, I don't fucking know you, bro. <laughs> I feel like they're definitely going to get on my case about uh, having been part of Shira, but I can, I can, that's, that's my own thing I can deal with. I guess we will have to see. As you all enter the, the courthouse, you can see uh, to your right, there. Are, well, on both sides of you as you enter, there are statues of um, what you're not entirely sure, possibly old warriors. But to the right, you can see that there is a large statue of a woman with this sort of halo around her in front of a, a small pool of water. That little, you know what? You know what I'm talking about, uh, but that you may recognize as Lady Doji, the same woman whose shrine um, some of you might have been planning on going to today. Other than that, you can see it is filled with with a bunch of uh, samurai, a couple of magistrates that are just standing awaiting your arrival, and standing looking out the window is the daimyo. What would you guys like to do? Around and see, like, thing did I see? Yeah, burn or or yeah. You can you can make a religion or you don't have a culture check in. <laughs> what is that? Culture. History or religion? Either. History. Yeah, I, either or will work for me. Religion or history. <laughs> well, still, still pretty good. Being yeah, story. you. <laughs> no, not with the net one. It's not. You're not sure. You you can, you can stay polite, and you know that. I mean, you probably shouldn't be swinging from the chandeliers in here, but you look up and you can see there is a second floor to this building and there are a couple of people leaning over uh, looking you can see they look like nobles that have just come to see um you know that here the the courts of the the crane clan are famous and you had hoped never to find yourself a prisoner in one um you're not sure how you should be behaving right now Did yeah you know, like elias would know or at least so have an idea He's been in this situation before. Kind of. Yeah, I mean, you guys can. I'll I'll leave that up to your role play mostly. Uh, you can act however you think would be appropriate. Yeah, if you cross any lines, there may be roles to be made. But but for now, um, the you see Seshu standing there, and he just nods at you and gestures for you to um, approach the, where the, the trial seems to be held and he just points for you to go and sort of stand near where that book is in the center. Sorry, my founder is lagging really bad. That's why I'm also lagging in my speech. Yeah, my 
four year old does very badly at the moment. It is uh, very funny because I just reload because the map there is not the player side. What? That's a four. Okay, and all right, Jerry and I guess Spike probably won't be here right now. So the two the two samurai standing on either side they just nod at you and and point for you to go and line up, sort of as though you were falling in in front of Daichi. But uh, Jerry will be up there, and Z will actually she'll she'll be kind of conflicted as to whether to go and sit down or not. And she looks at you guys like, should I? I mean, I'm technically, like, I think maybe still one of your commanding officers. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, you weren't exactly involved in the incident, so. Yes, but I do have responsibility for you guys. And she sort of looks at Seto and is very confused because now you're back and robot has gone. He's <laughs> very confused. I mean, if you do show up, you might have to explain your position as uh, being responsible. And yeah, you told us not to talk. She she just nods and, and she says, "All right, good luck." And she she just sits down on the bench. But you can see that she's looking quite nervous about what's happening. She's sort of scratching at her arms. He'll be fine. This can only go well. <clears throat> Probably. We'll see. Something will happen, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. <sighs> if has called us for. Well, uh, not just yet. I won't be pulling that out, but let's see how this trial goes. Uh, everyone falling in there? Okay. Yeah. As you as you walk in the the crowd that is around, they will sort of start to hush and watch you all approach and fall in. As the the daimyo turns around, places his hands down on the table and is just looking across at you with a very serious look on his face. Uh, in front of you, you see there is a book that it just says the Book of Law, and it has a bunch of um. It has a bunch of <clears throat> like instructions and laws that that one must follow. Basically, there for your reference. Being <clears throat> just waving again like she did the first time meeting him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's an interesting read. Uh, you can give me a perception check as you give a quick skim over. As Juni is reading, and she's just waving to the uh, diner. Oh, first time, I, th I thought you said first time reading that. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah. No, she, she's just uh, waving uh, like the first time she met the dino. Alright, and Seto, are you also falling in there or are you staying in the aisle? Uh... I mean, I'm technically, I wasn't a part of it. <laughs> I'll just go, fuck it. I'll just be behind. I want to hear what the hell is going on. All right. Good. Thank you all for coming on time. Not putting up too much of a fuss. We appreciate we appreciate people that don't give us too much trouble around here. 
Seshu tells me that you all encountered some things in the forge and had to defend him. We are sorry that that is the way things went, but he also says that none of you turned into any giant elementals, so that's a good start at least. But I do have some questions for you all. Firstly, which of you is the leader here? Quite better. No, for the complicated question. From my time here, it would be more yeah, accurate yeah. to say none of us is a leader as much as we are a group of equals. Mm. Hey. Oh, Oh, no, 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 I'm so sorry, I'm late. Win cord. Um, and I have just gone home. No worries, thank you for joining us. We have, um, you guys have basically taken a long rest in the jail cell and the following morning being, uh, well, it's sort of mid-afternoon now, midday, I mean, uh, as you've all been escorted to the courthouse and led before the daimyo and a couple of other magistrates and uh, nobles. Thank you. Sorry I'm late, and sorry I, I let you know on, on such short notice. It's cool. Not a problem. <clears throat> we are we, we're all here now, as he's just basically asked who the leader is, and June has pointed to Seto. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I already as I always come to so what currently my knowledge though before it was going to say so so let's say he got wrapped up Egg business. Hook <clears throat> up with it. So, let the people. Well, then, seeing as most of you can't seem to agree, what clan do you represent? Are we the last say? Or am I just going to throw this to nobody? Give you some time. I, th I thought I had a good say. He looks over it as all of you are sort of exchanging looks, and he says, You we know, Mr. Alder. We have received a bounty from the Shearer Corporation for your head. It's a strange thing. For uh, next pirate to make their way to Taton. Well, I'm not the man I once was, and I'll use their bounty on me as uh, evidence for that. If you don't mind uh, me asking, why have they put such a bounty on your head? Were you exiled? Along the lines, but more specifically, I, well, internally I fought for my freedom, and after I got it, they decided that's not going to happen, and here we are. Hmm. He nods, seeming to, he doesn't seem to judge you too much for being a part of it. And as I understand it, most of you have been uh, earning your rings, is that right? You are samurai trainees? This is true. I think most of us have their full five rings at the moment. Some of us only have four. Some three, and I, I think Seto only has three, right? Two. Three. Two. Two. <laughs> Some less than four. 
So I assume you will be trying to get to the Gempuku Festival in a couple of days. Am I right? We're definitely trying, but uh, things keep uh, popping up. And when you attend this festival, whose banner will you be flying? I give looks to the body again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, who? Can I, I have a glance around to see if there's hmm, any sort of like. I think uh, if I recall, that's over. Wait, we aren't running, are we? No. Then... Actually, is, is Sokka, like, naive enough to... I mean, knowing the politics, does this clan have anything against the dragon clan? Do not mean. You can, totally yeah. Crazy. Yeah, Z, Z did remind you um, not to let them know that you were from the Blue Dragon Clan. Okay. But uh, you can give me a history check if you want to see what you know about their okay. clan history and if there is any bad blood or anything. Sandrias yet to load in, but that is a 24 in D&D Beyond. Okay, yeah, you you know that there is there is some bad blood between the, the Crane and the Crab clans, but the Dragon I mean, the, no one really likes the Blue Dragon Clan. That's uh, that's pretty universal, but they they are pretty close. They they basically the number two clan to the Red Dragon Clan, underneath the Shogun. So there isn't there isn't too much there, other than maybe some rivalry. Though it doesn't seem like you're being brought in for anything of that at that level. He's just trying to ask what clan you guys come from, and no one wants to give him an answer. So he will also be asking, are you Ronin? Uh, she shakes her head. We are affiliated with a clan, but we do not feel comfortable sharing it. Uh, I, 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 I tell you telepathically. Good move. I can... Uh, if you need an answer, you can say... Fuck, which clan was Miramoto from again? Red. He was red. blue dread. No, 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 no. Red. He, he, was, he was red, yes. Mm. I mean, unless... I, I remember it being was... ironic because he was wearing green, but yes. he was from the red dragon clan. You can say that, and I'm pretty sure... We can say he owes me one, so if we need a... Uh, word from a red dragon representative. Right now we are waiting for our lawyer. We do not uh, want to give information that we do not want to... that could be held against us for your yeah. rights. He just he plants both his hands and he goes, This is not going to go very well for you if you do not answer my questions. And this is the simplest of all of them. What clan do you come from? And as he says this, you hear Lady Sumihime's voice um, echo from behind. She says, they are with me, Daimyo. Oh, and uh, Sumihime walks in, and yeah, as you say that, you see Z sort of melt into the chair, also going like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, she was a mimic the entire time. <laughs> on top of another Oh my! Since I've lost connection to the server, it should pop up in a minute. Amazing. Oh. Well, of course, I'd be happy to hear Sumimimo's voice. <laughs> she. She walks up and she stops next to you, Seto, and like sort of does a double take and looks you up and down and she says, Ah, oh, welcome back. Yeah, good to be back. She just takes a step forward and uh, up onto the stairs as she she makes her way around um 
to stand right in front of the daimyo. Just up here on the pedestal. And she says, these warriors are with me. They are my escort from the capital. If you are holding them, I would very much like to know why. And he just, he says, well, princess, I'm afraid your friends here opened up the Titan Forge and quite possibly caused the volcano to erupt last night. Thankfully, it is not fully erupted, so perhaps I was able to stop it in time. But this cannot stand. And she, she looks back over her shoulder at the rest of you. She says, well, I do not see how they are connected. Haven't you been wanting to get that door open for years? And he says, yes, but the only way to do that is with one of the old elementals. Now, all I want to know is if any of these are those old elementals reborn, because you know what kind of trouble that can bring. And there's like murmurs throughout the place as she turns and she says, well, I'm sure some of you can, well, I'm sure all of you can prove that you're not big scary elementals that have come to end the world, can't you? I mean, if I were an elemental, I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> you can give me a persuasion check to see how they understood that. Oh, sure. <laughs> like, do you mean like I would have easily broken out, or like I would have already destroyed this place? Uh, 19. <laughs> Not bad. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, and as I said, uh, you'll have advantage on ooh, charisma yeah. checks in here because Jerry actually has most of the answers. <laughs> it's just he's unfortunately not able Where's to go. Is there a level? Oh, That's right. A 19, they, they, he doesn't... You don't seem to offend anyone. Um, you do notice that there are a couple of nobles sitting... Like, some of them are taking notes and... Australia, you see the bard that sort of gave you information before. Um, you can see everyone around here is very invested in what's happening right now. Is anyone else trying to give any explanations or say anything? If I Down to let's say first one. Oh, we have ways for testing these sorts of things. Whether you're elementals or not, we will soon enough find out. But, my lady, we do not wish to keep your trainees from the festival if this has all been for nothing. And, and she says, yes, well, I think they're all quite eager to to get there as soon as possible, finish getting all of their rings, so if we could wrap this up soon, that would be appreciated. Also, they were supposed to help me visit my mother's shrine, but instead, here I am. And at this, he, he sort of cocks his head and looks at the rest of you and says, well... Is that true? Were you going to help Sumihime clear out the shrine? From his face, as or Orchwood. You see an older woman that is sitting to the side. She just turns and nods at the daimyo, and he, he notices it, and he says, "Well." That is, been just as much of a threat as any elemental these days. We would greatly appreciate someone's help, but 
and he just he, he seems to be considering this trying to understand what's going on I still don't understand how you opened the forge without a phoenix egg and then he notices back on what Estrella said you there am I right and she's saying she just said that you're from the phoenix clan and got wrapped up in some egg business would you mind elaborating on that <clears throat> well, she, um, she's a known joker, you know, I don't really know what the hell is going on, to be honest, I was in a bit of a sleep, like, I, I kind of overslept the last couple of days, so, uh, yeah, I don't really know what she meant, so. Yeah, Lido often gets drunk and it's her word is odd. <laughs> I'll, I'll mention it's also ideal to uh, carry yourself more elegantly in court. You can make me a group deception check there, um, June and Seto. Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, they've Sick. already <laughs> knows what happens if I do it. <laughs> the Akhmander oh, is drunk argument is gonna win this. <laughs> uh... <laughs> well, you might say- Yep! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Three not ones this session, holy shit. I had two of them. Fuck me. <laughs> Considering putting him in for therapy, he gets drunk way too often on duty. Yeah, he looks at <clears throat> he looks at Seto saying that he's tired and he's like, Oh yeah, tired. Heard that <laughs> excuse before. <laughs> yeah, he seems convinced that, that Seto's just a drunk and um <laughs> and he, he was alright then. Sorry, Dan. Well <laughs> no, I can't I'm say fine. that inspires much confidence in you clearing out the the yokai infestation, but I suppose no one else is willing to do it. Would remind you our encounter with the demons and devils in the forge? Not yes. Seshu will, will actually raise a hand and say, yes, Daimyo, uh, I will vouch for them. They did help us defeat the Baylor and the elementals in the forge. They, they could have easily overpowered me if they had Joined forces with the Ifriti, but they seem to have no allegiance to them, sir. And he he seems to um he seems to take that message to heart as he says, Ah. Oh. So what purpose did you have then for opening the forge if you are not here on elemental business? Um our friend Jerry likes to forge stuff. I... He likes the forge. And Jin really grabs his um, uh, his hand, the the one that's mechanized. Also, this he likes to make adjustments. Yes, yeah, so you'll see. Seshu is still looking down at at Jerry's arm, like he kind of found it weird that he didn't take the prosthetic off last night. It's just that it's like welded into his arm, and he'll. Damia seems to seems to listen to it. I'm sure Jer Jerry would back that up a bit. Um, as he says, look, you need to understand my concern here. That forge has not been open for hundreds of years, and the last time it was open was when Taton was at war. I need to make sure that no one who is trying to open it is trying to restart any, or reopen any old wounds, and definitely not destroy the city. And at this, you'll see a magistrate on the side say, yes, sir, they must be punished. I mean, there is a 5% chance every year that the volcano explodes if, if you are not here, and that would destroy 90% of the mountain. There's... There have been 
two earthquakes already. And Can I just, just shoot him like a glare? Yeah, give me an intimidation check. I think you'll find it better to speak clearly in the presence of the daimyo. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, yes, of, of course. Uh, and he just, you see him look a little bit confused and then say, uh, <clears throat> well, so the, of course there is a 10% chance that each year there will be an earthquake, um, 20% chance that there will be a fire, and a 5% chance that there will be an eruption. Now, when there are earthquakes, that 5% chance is at least tripled, and they must be punished for this. So they, I, I recommend the usual punishment of being burnt alive. And he just gives a nod to which the daimyo just lifts a hand and he says, Your counsel is noted, magistrate. But I think for these young ones, they have not done enough to deserve such a thing, especially seeing as the volcano didn't erupt, and I don't believe anyone was even injured. So, don't worry there, kids, we won't be burning you alive, and he looks a little bit like, Jesus, this fucking nerd ruining our reputation as being the peaceful ones, but okay. <laughs> well, let us assure you. We will not be of we will not be harbingers of any disastrous events that could ever happen in the future. Well, that will be for the curator to decide. I want you all. I'm going to let you go for now, but I want you all to visit the museum and speak with the curator so that he may test and make sure that you are not of any danger. You all seem, well, you don't seem like a threat, I'll put it that way, and we will keep a close eye on you, but I ask that you stay in town then for a couple of days, at least until you have finished your training. I assume you have come to use the schools here. For what now? I believe the princess might be able to answer that. She'll say, uh, well, you know how my father likes it. They've been going all around the, the country. I think, I think they've gotten the hang of it now, eh? Uh, but it, uh, she will turn to you and say, but there are schools here in the city if you wanted to just take your tests here, I suppose. Indeed. And at this, you will hear another voice as she looks up and she goes, oh no. As uh, another person enters and you see the form of... Um, You see a man in uh, yellowish and red samurai armor as he, he comes walking in and as he walks past, he, he seems to uh, walk right up behind you. Mm, I'm not sure if any of you would actually recognize him, but he seems to recognize you as, as he walks in and and bows his head to each of you as he passes. He says, ah, sorry I'm late, Daimyo. I had some business to attend to. I see who's gotten started without me. Hello, everyone. So we don't so recognize him. Does anybody recognize him? I'm not actually sure if anyone would. Does anyone recognize the image? Because you would have I seen mean, that. I mean, the image I, looked familiar. It, yeah, it looked familiar. I'm not sure where. Okay, well, uh... you would recognize the armor he is wearing. Is um, You would definitely recognize that, that he is wearing the armor of the Topaz champion. 
Oh, and, I remember now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he is. You can give me an inside check, anyone that that wants to, um, other than Seto, because you definitely haven't met him before. Uh, oh, now I know exactly who it is. Okay, yeah, you you all recognize now that that is uh, Hinaga Tenshiro in human form. He seems to have put the wings away for a little bit as he's come into to this. And as you, you recognize who it is, he smiles at you, Sakura, is, and as he's just sort of bowing and, and greeting you, he seems completely friendly. Uh, but the daimyo looks a little bit pissed that he's late. She, she bells back to him. She also looks very happy to see him. And, and uh, <sighs> telepathically says that she'll make him some tea later. I see a big smile across his face, which is <laughs> kind of a strange thing to see on his human face. It just doesn't doesn't really suit him. Like, he, he looks better <laughs> as a dragon. But the daimyo will say, Oh, nice of you to join us, Inaga. I understand that you know some of these people already. He says, oh, yes, they spent the other night uh, at my temple. They defended it from the river Ronin, who I think may have been trying to rob me. I, I would vouch for them any day. They are great warriors and noble as well. I, we saw their show. It was quite something. Uh, burned the house down, in fact. And he says, oh... So first they they erupt the mountain, and now you're telling me they're the ones who burned down the theater. Well, well it wasn't on purpose. I would you actually say... You were not the say, ones who burnt it down. I would say... Sorry, thanks. One. There's no nuance here. We did nothing to contribute to the burning of the theater. When you say Lorifax is it, like he just frowns and he sort of scowls at, at Hinaga, and Hinaga nods and shrugs and he says, uh, "It's true, uh, Kakita Shen helped me fight them back, but it seems Lorifax had some interest in them. He may have retrieved the book." And Daimyo shakes his head and he says, "No, that's impossible. It's." It's still locked away between the planes, and within a null fold, there is no way he has gotten the book again. What does Lorifax want with the lot of you? He kind of pissed them off a long time ago. Right? Uh, but he is most likely a time. In my opinion. He just stares at you, expecting you to elaborate. When what he, the diamond apparently goes that way, the river X. The realm of dead bring for building up. So that is a theory. Maybe. So I. You know the thing I said about saying the bare minimum? <laughs> uh. 
he does he seems to to consider this and he he looks over at one of the other samurai and he says go to the communications hub and just make sure everything's where it's supposed to be will you you don't want to have to deal with Lorifax again well if this is all true and lady sumihime just cuts him off and says Look, Daimyo, I don't mean to be rude, but quite honestly, I think they're really running out of time, and I promise I'll look after them. After all, not going to be much here if we don't get Mother all satisfied again, isn't it? And he just rolls his eyes and he says, well, if you think a drunk and his fools can help you with the yokai, then I see no reason to stop you. Remove their shackles, and he just sighs, sort of defeated, and and she goes, oh, thank you, Daimyo, and she just walks over to the, the old woman and says, and thank you, grandmother, and she starts whispering something in her ear as uh, Seshu walks over and begins undoing your manacles. Can I see what she's telling to the grandma? Uh, yeah, you can give me a perception check as she's sort of, she's trying to cup her hand over, but you got the lip reading technique. Yeah, I'm not rolling today anymore. <laughs> That's all right, though. With an 18, you you are still able to, to make out that um, she she seems to just be reassuring the old woman, and she says, um, the shrine will be clean again soon. Okay. But you see this this woman, she's got a smile on her face and, and she just, her eyes almost seem closed, but she's just standing there quite frail and um, Lady Sumihime just gently touches on the, the back and then Heads back down the stairs as the, the daimyo says, Then you will be expected to help Lady Sumihime with her mother's shrine, and then to report to the museum and speak with the curator. I mean, go in whichever order you please, but if this does not happen within the next 24 hours, we will come looking for you. You will go to the right away. Quickly, can I uh, just ask if we know anything about the book? You can give me also a religion or a history check on that one. You know that the Crane Clan famously holds many of the forbidden books in Kiga, um, that they have got some one of the most secure banks in the world. Like you've known many pirates that have wanted to go and uh, pull off a heist on the bank in, in this town. But from what he said, the hiding things between the planes is what he said and you have no idea what book they could be referring to. You will also, as you're sort of thinking about this, you wear glasses, right? Yes. Yeah, they're not looking so good. <laughs> but you you realize, <clears throat> as you're sort of standing there considering this, that like the lenses are actually pretty much gone from these glasses after everything you went through yesterday. And... You could probably use some repairs to them. I, I shat myself. Think for a second. They had some kind of magic to see, to indicate <laughs> if there was anything I was thinking. And then no, you just hit me like, yeah, you, you look like trash, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Your glasses are broken. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, no, no one. You know, it has that, 
It's like heaps on the frame because it broke. <laughs> oh, my dad has that at the moment. Yeah, look, at this point, I think Elias has got like one tiny shard of glass left where the lenses should be. And the, yeah, how bent they are is up to you, but they're not working as glasses, right? Well, uh, I will slip them in my pocket and apparently take out another pair of fresh glass. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have multiple pairs? <laughs> I. I expect a lot of things to happen. I mean, yeah, that's good. Cool. Did you have a... <laughs> like you, no, do you I'm have glasses in your equipment? No, no, that's... I, I wish. I'll say... I don't. Roll me a d100 to see if you get above an 80 then you've got another pair of glasses with you. Otherwise, you're going to have to go oh. buy a new one. Oh, oh, so close. You you do actually have another pair of glasses in your bag, and as you pull them out, you realize that the lenses are smashed on those as well. And it's just like, seriously? Oh! <laughs> Fix that. Oh, yeah, mending. <laughs> Some kind of Harry Potter shit, oculum repair bullshit. <laughs> Let's try a Vendrakadabra instead. A Vendrakadabra instead. That's just called pa Isn't that power word? <laughs> no, that would be the grand version. Where it's okay. basically guaranteed. That's yeah, that's <laughs> the population. Basically, yeah. Um. So, yeah, you, you guys have been sort of... The, you see the people around the court seem kind of disappointed that this is all it's come down to. But um, with Lady Sumahime being there, they they don't seem to want to upset the apple cart too much. And with both Seshu and Hinaga uh, vouching for you, they are letting you free. So if you would like to leave, you can, unless there's anything else you want to discuss during this interaction. No. This interaction with who? Sorry, <laughs> I, I blanked out for a second. In the court room, like with the daimyo, if there's anything you want to ask any of these people, there's they don't seem to be hostile towards you at this point. They seem to believe your story, at least for now. I'll sort of just say to uh, the daimyo, if you ever need a hand against Shira, I'll be happy to take part. Hmm. That reminds me. And you see Sumihime sort of wince as she's like, oh shit. And he says, The Shogun is not in a habit of accepting criminals into his ranks. And you were ex-Shira, but I, I mean, I, I believe that you've gotten out for the better. But are you going to be all participating under the Red Dragon? And Sumihime actually, like her, she, she like looks at you all kind of surprised, like, oh shit. You didn't actually give that away before I walked in. Cool. But she didn't say anything. Well, I believe I will. But... I cannot speak for my colleagues. Well, all I mean to say is that the Red Dragon is welcome here. And you are welcome to use our facilities if you still need to complete any of your trials. I know that the way of training for you people is to go across all of Kiga, but when there is a 
time pressure, I understand that you might want to speed things up, and our samurai are all more than ready to participate. We wouldn't want it to be an unfair challenge, would we? Any questions, or are you going to go and deal with that shrine? Nothing for me. See him when he starts leaving. The one with The one who loses always. He always. Some is lost, some is gained. <clears throat> As you're walking out, Seto, you will see the daimyo go and uh, speak to one of his samurai, and you'll be able to read the lips as he says, Keep an eye on them. The mage hunters were here yesterday as well, and I think I know what they were looking for. But I'm going to go check on the Corpus Eternitas. See you later. And he starts walking out to leave the other door. And you, you just sort of see this as you're making your way out. Anything else anyone wants to do in here before we head outside? Nope. Nothing yet. Okay. In that case, as you make your way out of the, the courthouse, Z will just just erupt into joy and she well that was awkward as fuck but holy shit I'm glad to see you all thank you thank you Lady Sumihime and Seto welcome and she just gives you a big hug like she didn't actually get an opportunity to say hello properly before <clears throat> yeah Seto would just hug her back while saying good to be back but I'm gonna need some healing. I don't know what the hell is going on. I made up the usual shit later. Oh yeah, I got some new shit too. I, I think you'll like it. But uh, maybe not so much around here. They kind of stuck up in Teton. And she just like waves to the daimyo across the hall as he's leaving. And just like shakes her head at you like, oh, he's fucking beaten. <laughs> Although you must come with us back to uh, Elias's hometown, they got some great shit there. I'm, I mean, right, Elias? I won't say you're wrong, but there might be complications with plans visiting. Oh, right, they want to kill you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a long. Actually, not. It's not really a long story. I bought my way out, but they decided nah. Okay. I guess. It's kind of weird, though, isn't it? I mean, you bought your way out. What are they? Do they just kill everyone that actually pays their debts? I'll tell you what, they thought I knew too much, which I clearly don't because I have no idea what they're trying to do, but they are trying to do something. Well, they certainly <clears throat> found hunters or something of the, or the other off the 
you. You should just give out all the information that you know about them to really piss them off. Piss them off? Really? Am I a child? No, 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 no. I'm going to fucking destroy them. Yeah, but let's piss them off. I will see when time like comes that? if I'm mature enough to put it behind me. But for now... Oh. I mean, if you become samurai, I think you'd legally be, like, fully within your right to actually gonna go and do that. I mean, hell, I'd be out to help you out. Up to, sorry, I've smoked too much. That's fine. That was the, I wasn't actually, um, like, my brain might be having an issue, but I'm not just... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know. I, I had a lot of things, that's right, like... The Z is also going like, but I think uh, maybe this whole political intrigue thing is not, not for us. Huh? Shall we go find something to kill? Sounds good. Maybe there's that uh, communications hub or something to go talk to Philip so we can get properly get them off our backs. We tested for. In case we turn into giant, humongous elementals. Uh, they seem very convinced that we can turn into elementals. Well, they said... Them. They said, are you going to go deal with the shrine now? We said yes, so I think there's only one course of action. Yeah, he did say it didn't matter which which order you went in. But there's basically three three places that are... Um, that they're kind of expecting you to go, and that is to either the communications hub uh, the museum, because they said to meet with the curator at the museum that he would be able to do the test. Um, the communications hub, I think, is where the daimyo said he was going. They were going to go check up on something. When you mentioned Lorifax, that was where he wanted to go and check. And then there is, uh, yeah, the shrine of Lady Doji, which is where Lady Sume, Hime basically her plan was to go there so it's up to you where you guys want to go first you've got the whole of Tatron open to you now you are no longer um under arrest but you have to at least go and get tested before tomorrow hmm. so how about we go to the museum get tested then go to the other shop yeah sounds good a uh, quick question where did sakura get busted i'm sorry Busted? Is she not reborn? As in, honestly, we have no idea. <laughs> we just know that her mom was part of the elementals, and um, her parents could technically be counted as an elemental. Oh, yeah, I'd buy it. Really? <laughs> He's a fucking tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't know how Sakura and me are gonna pass this test. Like, genuinely. <laughs> Wait, and you? Wait, I... I'm not the. Uh, I'm not actually more sure on yours. Hmm. How about, how, how about me and someone else go see how they can make the test, and if possible, figure out a way uh, for you guys to cheat? Sure, sounds that good. sounds good. Um, I'll go. I mean, what what will happen to us if we are elementals? Um, they burnt, will uh, jail you. Burnt. Oh yeah, uh, burnt, burnt at the stake, I believe, is what they said. Yeah, that's gonna be... Oh wait, no, not... that's... Wait, no, no, sorry, no, that's burning something. That's for arson. For being elementals, they'll yeah. probably just put you in some magic jail for a long time. Z seems like kind of worried by this, but she says, you know, it doesn't make sense though. I, I don't understand why the crane is so against the elementals. As far as I understood the history, they like work together, isn't that? I mean, that's the point of that shrine, right? And she'll be using some knowledge that Jerry probably has that 
I mean, as far as I understood it, the Titans were made by the Elementals not to kill them all. I don't know, maybe someone's been spreading around some lies, or maybe some elementals did a thing and made wow. train can really pissed off at them. Let's not forget the giant in the forge. Well, that's yeah, the thing. Giants. giants are the ones that attacked Kiga like hundreds of years ago, and they keep saying that the forge was closed like hundreds of years ago. I mean, I I, I don't know, you guys, Sakura, you study more history than I do, and if anyone wants to make a history check on just the history of Elementals and Kiga and Taton, you can do that. This would be interesting to talk to the curator about. That's probably good. enough, June knows a decent amount. Sakura knows a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, well, I feel like Sakura usually knows a lot though. Bit of sick. At the any assault. Oh, that's true. You, yeah, you're exhausted right now. I think you have blood oh, yeah. exhausted. But, uh, uh, well, I'll wait, just, I'll just run. Long rest and down to one. Yeah, so it's still a disadvantage. Yeah, unless anyone is doing a restoration on Sakura today. That would be June's job. <laughs> I don't have bard levels, Australia. What are you talking about? Come on, man. Back with your... Like, didn't you get, like, the premium deal? Did you only get, like, the, the crappy poor man's deal where it's like... Yep, Tier one we're not gonna throw you down I into a tentacle I pit, but that's it. Do I do I do I get a juicy restoration today? Do I get a juicy restoration today? I don't think you're getting one from June, but uh, Z is going to come up to you and and go. Oh, Sakura! I mean, I I'm glad to see you looking okay. When I saw you all last night, I. Legitimately thought some of you were going to fall over, but look, I figured something out, and she'll cast a greater restoration. On you. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Did you just do something useful, Z? Right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so cool. Level sixteen, baby. <laughs> and she's just she seems quite chuffed with herself, but also like she's been. Smoking a lot this morning as she starts making her way off towards the museum and like you, you head towards the main city route. Oh wow! <laughs> oh. I mean, oh, now between all of us, I'm pretty sure we can let the sucker just continuously rewind, rewind time if we didn't actually do anything else ourselves. I can't do that that many times, so don't get too excited. This is not, I'm not your your new uh, restoration bot, anyone. Uh... <laughs> One who changed time. Guys. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, a, did, did Australia also have something to smoke this morning? <laughs> No, I mean that I've seen you reading that book, Australia. I think it may be yeah. time to switch it up. I think that might be getting a little bit like emo or something. When we met your poetry, <laughs> it was so positive. <laughs> that was a long time. Yeah, her face sort of goes sullen as she like remembers Kit for a moment and is like, Yeah, you you're right. Well, <sighs> Zito, how about that smoke? And she starts packing a pipe as you're walking off towards the museum. I'm like, okay, since they are like, oh, potentially up for debate. A little quick. The market finding the fire potion guy. I want to restock. Uh, yeah, you can easily do that. The market is sort of 
right around the entrance to the, the museum. This is Elias, you'll recognize this place, so will you tune as where you guys were before. Um, and the place that got turned into a moth. Yeah, that place is like just around the corner here. And I need a second. What? Did you you not end up taking those, that polymorph, those polymorphs potions? Yeah, he did. Uh, um, yeah, you'll have those now. But oh, wait, you, I have them? Yeah, you took all of the stuff that you bought from the shop. Well, I didn't of buy course. the polymorph potion. Yeah, that's mine. The stuff that he got is like, um, last time I was saying you can take all of the stuff that you bought. Like, you got the paper birds as well, and the. Uh, so, yeah, you, you've you got. I think. What was it? He bought. I think he got two or three. Two. Yeah, so you've got two um, random polymorph potions. Awesome. Now yeah. <laughs> How useful that'll be uh, well, remains to be seen. The question is... Yeah, I will tell you that as we go onto the map, and you can find it, but that's, that's pretty simple to get. Um, you'll easily be able to pick up Potions of fire resistance. What what price did I give you last time? Yeah, hundred. Hundred what? Gold. Gold. Go yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> like Jesus, I was ripping you off that time. No, uh, that's right. Then ten koku. <laughs> Sorry. Koku, then like then it's just hundred to have ten. <laughs> I'm just gonna drop, drop, uh, what's it called? 100 Koku to get 10 fire resistance. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, say, well, thank you very much. I, uh... uh how, just a quick rem reminder, how are we... You're doing your individual money, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, this one is individual. Cannot... Yeah, just just checking because otherwise, some of you might want to get involved in this player spending a hundred koku. But yeah, that's that's cool. You can easily you get ten potions of fire resistance. And he says, "Oh, thank you very much." Can I look for a, a place to grab as many glasses as I can? <laughs> grab glasses, like. Are you I looking like for a restaurant, or are you looking for somewhere that sells? <laughs> He's gonna build himself an armor glasses. of glasses. No, I just want a lot of them, you know. You can give me an investigation check, and June, you can run over to the other side of the city, please, because uh, my faith. Oh, so not the only one on the map. Well, actually, outside, outside. You're just coming in on. I'm just gonna put you down again. I'll delete the alter. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh... Yeah, okay, so as where you are arriving, the building directly on your right, you will see that there is a. Uh, there is a staff member from the museum that is quite cheery and he seems to be standing welcoming anyone that wants to come in. It doesn't seem like it's busy at all though. You can see this whole place is kind of bustling. But I am going to uh, ask that you just role play amongst yourselves for a second. I will be right back. Cool. Mm. So I think the plan will be June, uh, Elias, Raya and uh, Jared, who are here, get tested as well, being elementals, see how they do the test, and figure out a way of flubbing the test, so you guys don't get <laughs> detected as elementals for some reason. Oh. Here we go. Oh, no. And responsibility. What? 
I feel like that might be more difficult. How about I just polymorph you, um, Seto, into Seto, so he's just Seto and not elemental? <laughs> but, but wouldn't he be elemental since? I don't even know okay. if I'm elemental or anything. Or I could just say that, sorry. Um, instead of to back to it, and then, yeah. I mean, what, what also could be done is, uh, Polymorph me. I'll pretend to be either Sarko or Seto. Could also work third back. Which then? Well, then that's why we're testing the waters. Not sure if they I, water I... in the museum. That's why we're, we're, we're the, the non-elementals guaranteed are not going to get tested first so we can see what the deal is. <laughs> I mean, we don't I mean, even really elemental. know if we are elementals. Alright, so I'm, I'm going to have to duck out for 30, about half an hour. I just need to pick my parents up from a party. Uh, so good. yeah, I'll, I'll be back in about half an hour. Uh, uh, <laughs> so you guys can figure out, pro uh, I have one use of polymorph if anybody wants to use it, so yeah. Okay, cool. We will see you just now, and yeah, if anyone wants to take tune up on that polymorph, just let me know, and we can trigger that. Basically, a long-held ready action. But we'll see you just now. Okay, so as you all arrive here at the the market, you can see the entrance to the museum over there. There are a couple of stalls and whatnot scattered about, and Astraea has made their way to the potion shop, uh, which is over here. I mean, like, the thing is, we don't even know that we are elemental. Why are we... I guess we can't because... risk it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, did I give you the answer to your history checks earlier? No. <laughs> 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 I, I forgot about the history check, actually. But I, I remember I rolled a 30. Yeah, that's... So, yeah, what I was going to say on that 30 is that you have definitely sought out every uh, historical story <laughs> where, um, where, like, humans and dragons have made friends, and, like, <laughs> every time they have been civil, peaceful agreements between many of these things, because so much of Kiga's history is just war, war, war. Uh, but you do know that in Taton, there is a big, there is a sort of discrepancy. What most people believe is that the the forge, the Titan forge in Taton was created um, to defend against an attack by elementals and giants hundreds of years ago. But there are many people in from other clans that say actually the Crane Clan was sort of people didn't want anything to do with the Crane Clan at the time because they had made a pact with the Elementals. This is a big thing that Jerry has also been researching. So uh, you guys will probably all be able to hear this sort of information at the same time as you're discussing it here, but. One of the big things that you guys have noticed that you discovered in the, the forge is how they made Titan blood. And in the stories, Titan blood was created by the Phoenix and the Leviathan, who are two of the elementals. And there are some people that believe this is the place that they did it. And that forge you were in would suggest that those stories are true and that in fact the, the humans and dragons of Kiga made a pact with the phoenix and the leviathan to defend against the giants and that it wasn't that titans weren't built to kill the elementals but there's yeah this there's a lot behind this so it's okay, definitely so worth investigating if, if 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 the phoenix and the leviathan are like elementals what are the what are the other ones 
or you can give me a nature check to if anyone wants to see the yeah i mean you holy <laughs> shit <laughs> Uh, we'll get to that in a second, as everyone who wants to roll nature, you can do so. But Elias, while this is happening, you see a stall. Um, well, it's actually the shop right next door to the potion store. You see they sell scholars' supplies, and you kind of are surprised that you didn't find that place when you were looking for paper first. But uh, you sell. You see that they are selling scribes' equipment, basically, and that there's a good chance they'd have some lenses in there. But you can see they um, they sell mostly like library equipment. Uh, then uh, I'm just gonna quickly walk in and just see how many glass type of glasses I can buy. Okay, yeah, you'll see um, a cheery-looking gnomish woman behind the counter she says oh welcome dear he said let me know if you need anything and on the table next to her there are um, there is a case that has got a couple of pairs of reading glasses in it but there is one pair that is sitting up on a, on a little display pedestal that has got a, a price tag hanging from it and it is looks quite similar actually to the, the glasses in your profile pic they're just um these are finely crafted, like fine plated um, gold. You can see that this is quite possibly made by the guy you gave to upgrade your armor. It looks like the same style of metalwork. Huh. I suppose it'd be a pleasant surprise if it is of his work. Huh? I'll, 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 I'll buy it. Okay, you. I mean, you. <laughs> you want to have a look at the price tag? <laughs> I goes, assume oh. it can be absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so, but yeah. Oh, the, uh, but those are a special pair, I must say. Uh, those are the scribes' lenses that, that they use in the museum, and that uh, some of the professors like those. But uh, those are, are magical. They. They allow you to uh, translate different languages, so they are a little bit expensive. Ah. And you can, as you're looking down at this, you realize that this is wearing these. Um, as you sort of lift them up to your eyes, you see the books that are on her shelves. You see some of the titles sort of twisting and moving, and wearing these glasses. Um, means that you can understand written languages as if you were under the effect of the comprehend languages spell. Uh, alternatively, you can choose not to understand the words you read, allowing you to look at but not trigger or understand the words of hazardous texts, stuff like that. How much does it cost? Oh, that one's a little pricey. It's 300 cocoa for that one. You know, I should have called it because I was thinking it was 300. Yep, I'll buy it. Oh, very well. Thank you, sir. Uh, pleasure. Can I get you anything else? We've got uh, some null folds still uh, hidden in the back there. I thank you for your time and goods, but today I'm quite busy, so good oh, day, good. Well, and thank you, madam. Come back again soon, and she just, she seems quite chuffed with having sold that item, um, and yes, you will, so 300 koku from you, yeah, I can do and that. you gain scribes lenses, which will send to you in the chat. I'll make it on on Foundry so that we don't have the same issue when I make your crossbow. But these don't require attunement or anything. You can just basically assume that you can read all languages now while these you have these glasses. Nice. So 
part of you that just wants to go back and read that damn <laughs> the, the yeah. turret. Oh my god. I'll be honest, I was expecting to just get a regular old pair of glasses. Yeah, they did sell those as well for much cheaper, but you got you got a nice rare magic item there. <laughs> oh shit additionally while you wear the scribe's lenses you can't be charmed or possessed by constructs or sentient magic items and sentient magic items can't communicate with you good to know this by construct Cool. Um, did I learn? Well, I'm I'm assuming I learned something from my history check. History check. You learned the. No, no, no. Sorry, the nature nature check. Francis Green. <laughs> the curtains are blue. Damn, magic and shit is cool. I can see why y'all like it. <clears throat> nice to be a regular blood like us. I don't know, what rogue are you even? Inquisitive. Wait, what the fuck is that shit? Uh. Oh. That's worth fighting. Uh. Uh. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Hi. Hi. So I, I take it you didn't hear my whole explanation to the nature gen? No. Ah, okay, cool. I'm like talking, talking, and then Elias is like, I see why you like magic. I'm like, what? Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I got to deal with anything oh, I just no. said. <laughs> I'm like, oh, they can't hear me. Oh, okay, whoops. Um, yeah, so Astraea, you probably know who the Elder Elementals are. Um, you would assume that they are this, there is one for each of the five elements that you've been getting your rings for. And you probably, out of character, also know who the elementals are. But Sakura, um, you will know that in some in some cultures, the elements are slightly different, and they have wood and metal as elements instead of earth and void, I think. But that 
is the only connection you can really draw to your possible connection to the elementals is that maybe your dad's like a wood elemental but that that's not how you know the elements to work in Kiga. Okay. But you know there's the Phoenix, the Leviathan that has been mentioned, the Elder Tempest, which Australia you met yesterday. And uh other than that I don't think you've encountered anything about the others yet. But you would um, assume there's um, one for every element. Okay. And we'll be right back after this ad break. <laughs> We're watching what? <laughs> Next time on Dragon. Hey man, if it lets us keep having a music bot, I'm not complaining. Cool. But yeah, so are you guys just hanging out in the street, or, or are you going to a different shop? Are you going to the museum? Where are you headed? Uh, apparently we have nothing else to do, so... Museum? Museum. Just the uh, non-suspected elementals. Okay. So who is who is that? I think everyone but Seth and Sakura. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay, well are you guys I mean you Z will say we can probably go in without you actually taking the test. Like they don't we can just offer for us to go first. I don't think he's just going to know it when he sees you. It's not like you're on fire. I just feel like it'd be a bit weird if it's like Lord there and it's just like, oh no, but we, we don't want it. Yeah. I mean, suit yourselves. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, this is not his choice. I think... <laughs> it's choice, but that's fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I will also say it's a public museum. It's like it's not like yeah. this is a a guarded, not like walking into the castle or anything. This is a public place that any lots of people are going Pretty in and out a, of. A COVID testing. No, no, not even that. Like you, it's this is a very specific thing. It's like you've come to write an exam. So they've probably got somewhere special set up for that. It's not like anyone else comes here to be tested if they're an elemental. That's not, this is a very unique thing that you guys do. We will move you through to the front room so long. So is anyone taking um, June up on that polymorph before you go in? Just check. I think the plan was for them to scout and then maybe someone polymorph and go back in if needed. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Cool, so we will just... We'll assume that Seto and Sakurano. Yeah. 
seen a library just going around and read like museum just watching pictures and stuff yeah, yeah i think yeah. you'd <clears throat> you'd pretty easily be able to walk around the front of the museum and not make it obvious that you're with the rest of the group as you all just sort of file in i haven't got all the tokens down but there are there are a number of people milling about in and out of here and you see um there's one or two staff members as well but you can see at the end of the the hall there is a man dressed in similar robes to someone that you saw there in the in the courthouse who you assume is probably the curator standing at the end of the hall and in between him and you there are a number of serious magic items that are uh, in these really well-made um, cases you can see that the the metal that lines these cases Elias you immediately recognizes the the same kind of metal you were investigating last night that it's like it looks like little jail cells for the magic items interesting The can I just? Right. Um, is there any sort of like no touch sign? And uh, no, you don't. You see, there there is, there are sort of railings around some of the things, especially those items in the middle, which are pretty much implied uh, no touch. But the other, the glass cases, don't have anything like that. Then, just. Just like light, I'd just like to lightly uh, prod the glass case. See if that does anything. Yeah, you can you knock against it, and it is. It, it feels surprisingly sturdy. The one that you're standing in front of, as you do that, um, you see there is a lamp. I think you're standing in front of the lamp, right? Yeah. The and as you as you tap on the glass, you see this small wisp just rise up towards the the glass, like reaching out towards your finger. But as it touches this, as the smoke sort of touches the edge of the glass, you see it shudder backwards and then retract back into the lamp. But you you definitely for a moment you felt it trying to reach out towards you. Yeah, I know the feeling, little guy. <laughs> Um, meanwhile, who else is, are you guys checking anything out there? I'm just looking around. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking around. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you can let me know if you want to look into any of the, the items that you, you are standing in front of in particular, but, uh, I guess everyone's sort of milling their way around. Unless anyone wants to what the heck? ask, I'm... What the heck is this? Is that a key plate? <laughs> not quite. It looks much smaller. It looks definitely not big enough to be a blade. But it does look quite pretty, and there's a... Um, the diamond that is inside it is rather appealing but yeah you it doesn't it's not big enough to be a blade for sure the, what Seto is looking at is most definitely a sword and that you will see is some damn fine craftsmanship um, the, the blade is black it looks like a proper looks like Tenjiro sword basically Gonna be Sakura's mom. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had the best experience of museums. Is that, that like I'm, I'm watching on the stream? What is that orb next to Seto? Well, like the orb. Ooh. So it, the orb to like the left of Seto. Well, as 
Seto sort of makes the joke about it being a Naki 2.0, you you recognize this or you've seen one of these before. It looks similar to the bomb that went off in the in the stairs that flooded the whole place. But this one, you can see there is magic swirling inside it. You can make an arcana check to try and get a closer look. Sorry, bomb? You don't want it. Yeah, it is definitely another one of those spheres. It seems like it is not active, but... Um, you you know that if that thing went off, this place would probably be underwater. There's <laughs> that's that's a terrible thing to have just lying around. But you do realize as well that there is something magical about the casing that it's in. It doesn't look like it would be that easy to break into. It... Okay, okay, let's get. I guess she'll, she'll also just like look at the other items, but I can't see specifically what they are, because <laughs> maps just keep on dying tonight, so I'm on the that, stream. That's a sword. I'm actually, I don't know if it's a Oh, it's a sword. Yeah, what, what you go and look at over there, Sakura, is definitely a sword, um, and it it seems to be radiating with with energy. It's the energy seems necrotic from w just what you can sort of see through the glass, but you also see that it looks like it has gems on it, and they look topaz. Uh, they they look similar to stuff that you saw at Hinaga's temple. And you remember now that he was also talking a lot about the donations, recent donations to this museum that he had been investigating. And you, as you look down at the plaque, you see that this is actually an item that he donated. Hmm. And it seems to be, uh, the, the story according to the plaque is that this is the sword he used to win in the Iranian games. Holy shit. The cross guard looks like Thanks. it's made of gems. That's a huge fucking cross guard. It's a huge fucking sword as well. That sword is easily taller than, than Sakura, and looking at it, you, you wonder if maybe he used it while in dragon form, because it's a good, like, eight feet tall, that sword. Oh, yeah, that's... that's... <laughs> It's like anime yeah, style. Yeah. It's ah. like a proper giant sword. Dude, I want to see a dragon with a fucking sword. You did. I think you did see him fight like that. You... But oh, he was so using a katana so. then. That is, that definitely looks more like a, a great sword. Huh. Yeah, the, the blade that Seto is looking at actually looks much closer to what they were wielding and especially what the other Kakita Shen was wielding. Um, and Seto, you'll even see the plaque there that says the Kakita Dueling Blade. Um, and apparently this is the first Kakita Dueling Blade. Yeah, you wouldn't know this, but... but Jerry will probably mention to you that that shit cuts people's heads off in one blow. Like they are masters of EI Jitsu, the quick draw technique, and that these blades are famous for working similar to a Vorpal blade in that they can kill in one strike. But as you are all looking over things, this, the man will all step forward and say, Ah, oh, hello everyone. Is there something I can help you with? Oh, bye. Or, uh, I've been to... Oh, you are the ones. Some of us, anyhow. 
Is just you two Decker, there? Decker, uh, pretends that like she she doesn't know them at all. She just keeps on looking at the stuff. Completely doesn't pay attention to them. Yeah, he seems to only be addressing Elias and Australia at this point. Um, as everyone else is kind of browsing through the museum. Uh, like, just not... Eh. No, we have a couple more, but I believe they will want some time before they'd like to do their test. Ah, oh, well, uh, very understandable. We can start with you two if you, if you like. Uh, if anyone would like to see our newest displays, they are just through here in the wildlife and exotic section. And he just sort of announces this to the room, and then he says quieter to the two of you, he says, well, if you'd like to uh, get started so long, you can follow me through this way. And he points to the other door, which he then starts walking towards slowly. Just on the walk there, I just ask. You know, it's crazy to think you haven't... or nobody's really tried to uh, take any of these. Well, I suppose they've tried, but we wouldn't know. Oh yes, they have definitely tried, but everything in here is sealed in titan glass. I'm afraid you'd have an easier time Actually, I, I'm not sure, breaking into a god's apartment or something. I, I thought I had an analogy, sorry. I had a day, and he just, <laughs> he's, he just carries on and leads you through to what looks like a library. Sorry, what were you saying? So, no, I just said, believe me, I've also had a day as well. So the rest of you see the three of them head through into that corridor, what are you doing? It's basically Sakura and, and Seto that are sort of actively alive at the moment. Um, I guess... She'll, she'll go and look at stuff with him? instead of looking at stuff on our own. You will see when he said the creature and exotic section that the the door to the right has got a big paw print over the door. Oh. Um, and from where you're looking at the, the sword there, you can sort of see through the door and it looks like they've got, it's, it's, it's like a zoo or like a wildlife section. Oh. But yeah, you head back over to Seto where he's looking at a sword. She, she points to the door and says, can, can we go there? I think, I think there's, there's animals in there. Good. Like a pet in here. One of us. can we go there? Sure. <laughs> Yeah. So enthusiastic. Yay. <laughs> so let's go see them. I suppose it's easy Baby to dragon. you're just actually 16. <laughs> Pardon? It's easy to forget you're just actually 16. <laughs> okay, cool. So you guys, you guys are heading off to the wildlife section as... All right, this is a good split of the party, actually. I like um, <laughs> exploring the library. We will head over uh, to the library first. As you guys... <laughs> oh, it says there's phases. Uh, that, don't, <laughs> that doesn't mean anything, don't worry. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oftentimes it means like you could go here during the day or at night. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, at this point, I will put your tokens down in a sec. But as you're walking in here, I'm not sure if you can see the map yet, but what are you guys doing 
what are you doing, Australia, as Elias was sort of chatting to? Funny. Open. Yeah, I mean, as you as you walk in, you can tell me where you're actually looking if you want it. But um, as as you step in, you can see there is a, a massive amount of books in here. Not quite the same as Anaki's library, but it's quite a collection. Uh, and you will see standing at the end of the room, you will see a samurai that is just he's standing reading a book and sort of facing towards the window. Apparently, is a large man. Ah, it's just a perspective thing. <laughs> yeah. So you think until the other guy walks up next to him and you're like, oh no, that dude's pretty huge, actually. <laughs> but he's just built. He's like a large human. Looks like a fighter or something. Uh, oh. just uh, wait visible okay yeah, yeah so as as you guys walk in you see that there are a number of statues around this room and you see there's maybe one or two scholars them um, up on the the upper levels but uh the the man says ah uh, here you are uh, the curator, and he just steps forward and bows and points you towards the man standing on the stairs who closes the book in his hand and turns to face you or you. Uh, let me just put down the other smaller arm. Yeah, so what do you guys do as you walk in and you see this man looking down towards you? Hmm. He's fucking huge. I'll, I'll, I'll just stand there and just bow across the room. He walks into the middle there just as Astray, you you find there are some interesting book titles here, but um, they mostly seem to be instructions on the side on dueling techniques and um, proper swordsmanship, that sort of thing. And as he's walking down the stairs, he says, So, you are the ones that have come for the elemental test, are you? We heard there were some rumbles in the night. Indeed. No, you'll find that we are not elementals. At least I'm not. Well, I suppose I will be the judge of that, won't I? Of course. And he, he takes a few more steps forward and says, Come, we will deal with your friend in a moment, but... If you are so adamant that you are not an elemental, let me have a look at you. Alright. And he's going to make a medicine check on you as he just starts looking you up and down, mainly just looking at um, the features of your, your face, like you can see he holds you by the chin and just moves your face from side to side, getting a good look at you.
Oh, you don't look like you've got any scales or feathers or anything like that. In fact, probably one of the most remarkably human-looking people I've seen in a while. You must be Mr. Alder. Should be right. Yes, well, tell me, what do you know of the Shira clan's involvement with the elementals? And he takes a step back, just sort of trying to lead you over towards the window as he speaks. I'll sort of just kind of look up, pretending to be in my own world, trying to think back. Uh, let's see. Give me a history check if you want. <laughs> but oh, yes. Otherwise, feel free to <laughs> make shit up. I mean, uh, sort of, in a way, like, and not just. Yeah, like, you can role play into a 10. As <laughs> being like, you don't. Well, I can't say I know anything for certain. Most of my investigations for them were in efforts of finding people who hadn't paid their debts or well, more hands-on investigative work if you will, and not sort of the theoretical stuff of it. So unfortunately absolutely nothing. Though it wouldn't surprise me to think they absolutely want to get involved if they aren't already. Well, that is what I've heard, that Mr. Shearer himself has been trying to gain control over at least one of the elementals. It's obviously a next to an impossible task, but I do find it strange that you've ended up here just as they've been trying to kill you. Are you sure there's nothing that you want to share with us? Any reason they might want you dead? You know, we could help you. Well, I... I escaped their grasp, simple as that, and they decided... They don't... I, I believe they might have decided they want to make an example out of me, to... never leave your family. Family, so much for that. He thinks for a second and says, well, I suppose that is a more complicated matter than any, but you sure you don't remember participating in any rituals or know of any cultist-like behavior in the Shira Corporation? Because from what I've heard, they are no strangers to it. I'll say... One strange behavior I found on my investigation, particularly my latest one that got me my freedom, they they had a fleet that would carry obscene riches, and that seemed to only go into Uchibito Bay. What they would do with these riches? It's beyond me, but it doesn't seem like it's there for transport or trade. So are they the ones that killed Gargajin? We heard that some colossal beasts washed up on shore the other day. Two of them. The dragon turtle and the kraken. I can't say for certain it was that. Well, no, I can't say for certain what it was, but I am I still feel confident saying it was the Meteor Swarm. You see, he looks genuinely concerned at this for a minute, and he says, well, then perhaps they are more involved than they are letting on. Absolutely. Kragira and Gargajin were, well, a sort of offspring of the Elementals. Uh, 
In Ilchibita Bay, there are reports that Prima Dunn, the Earth Elemental, has been sleeping there for many years, that he hasn't shown up in human in humanoid society for decades at least. Though, if you are also from the Red Dragon Clan, as they said, perhaps you would know about Kamiko, the champion of the arena there in in the capital. They say that he is the immortal total, the Oh, what do they call him? <clears throat> but supposedly he's the one who holds the Earth Element. Have you ever had any contact with him? No. My presence in the Red Dragon Clan has been short, to be blunt. Or new, rather. Estrella, you hear this as well, and um, you remember the, the name that he mentions. You have met a total named Kamiko. Um, um, I find it was in the. Yeah, that's the exact name that he's he's mentioning, and at this point, he seems to be in more of conversation with Elias than actually doing any sort of physical testing. Like it's pretty demonstrable I'm not uh... <laughs> Yeah, he seems pretty convinced by what you're saying, but he does he does seem concerned about the Shira's involvement with the elementals and he does seem to be wondering why you were they were after you. Estrella, is there anything you want to interject with before he carries on? As such, he's in trying something. And have you had any? strange experiences lately of I don't know the fire bursting from your hands for no reason sand turning to quicksand underneath your feet anything like that anything unexplained and elemental no that that'd be horrifying <laughs> Elemental power was I'm no stranger to magic items, but as for myself, I'm dark dark and anabase. Unless somebody's really fucked with me while I slept. Okay. Give me a persuasion or deception check, either or, depending on what. I'm not actually sure if you're trying to lie here or not. I feel like Elias would have probably chalked the water incident in the turret up to the water thing, because I feel like they'd have a use for cooling things down, so that'll be persuasion. <laughs> Uh, what? I mean, it's still a 20. <laughs> it's a still a 20, but you rolled a net one. Reliable talent, most yeah. likely. Yeah, I know, but still. Uh, yeah, the, that's a perfect, like, Elias is totally telling the truth because he's actively avoiding admitting to himself that that was anything weird. Just ignoring the fact it came out your nose, the, that was the machine. It was all the machine. There's no way. <laughs> I mean, it, it could have gone, it could have had a backfire and come. the water came back in and it goes up my nose, which then will come out. 
Yeah, no, there's there's various levels of denial that Elias is in and myth, um, is convincing you enough to... It. it was a long day yesterday. Yeah, no, they, I, I totally <laughs> I, I totally agree with, <laughs> with Elias. It's like, look, a lot of weird shit happened yesterday. I don't think I'm magic now. There's... Um, but yeah, he will. <laughs> he seems convinced by this, and he says, "And what about you, Miss? Uh, any strange elemental experiences lately?" There was the any related to false. No, they would fail to me. Could have been comment outside. Thing uh, notable I'd have to say about you is your love of fire resistance potions. Yeah, which were probably jingling as you were. Oh no, I suppose. <laughs> um, but they will, at, as he's asking this, you'll see the other guy that led you in here just walk up with two vials in his hand and hand them to. Um, to the the curator who will take it and and he'll say ah all right well if you'll each just give me a small vial of blood i will be able to uh, test its properties make sure that you don't have any elemental heritage or anything like that uh, you know these things can be somewhat similar to a blood curse and i suppose we'll be able to see if you've any got any of those as well and help you take care of it if we must. And he just he lifts up a, a vial and he takes a small dagger from his belt. It looks like um, it is where one would usually keep their tanto, but you can see that the dagger has got a vial inside it as well to draw blood. Uh, I might do this myself, or is that not an option? Be my guest, and he spins the dagger around and offers you the the hilt. Oh, I'll take it, and I'll just cut my palm. Oh, it. Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> and he, you can see his. It, it's like you you went more more hardcore than was required, but so you you can just. Bring it up uh, into the point. Oh, here, and he just hands you the vial to try and let you bleed into that as well. Uh, habits, Shira. And I'll just empty, <laughs> empty it into the vial. They make you cut yourself. I thought you uh, said there weren't too many rituals. Well, it's more of a thing of if you fail to do something, you pay. You pay in blood, for example, you pay in money. They're flexible in that sense. So, tell me, do the Shira keep the blood that you pay them? Is this no, just a metaphorical no. thing, or do they actually store your blood? Not to my knowledge, no. They, I've seen them toss it plenty of times. It, it's, I'd have to assume it's just to make an example. Well, you must be careful with these things, you know. One can curse your blood when it is miles away from you and it will still affect your body. Some of this magic is darker than it seems and he takes the, the dagger back and just moves over to you, Estrella, as if to do the same thing. Oh, oh shit. I didn't know that. <laughs> Dagger pockets, finger and he grabs your wrist as you are doing this, 
and I mean, this is these are interesting tattoos you have, Miss. Where did you get them, if you don't mind me asking? And he's pointing to the the lifing scars along your wrist. Hmm. <sighs> During a lightning storm, we and decided to strike the tree. You are how many years old and you sat under a tree in a thunderstorm? You are as well, Leonard. He looks just over, sort of between the two of you, and he says, And where is the rest of your party? I thought that there were at least five of you. Well, it Indeed was... they are, but sorry. Yeah, they, they was like, they saw the museum and was so excited. They wanted to see, like, some of them went to see the as they put it, the petting suit. It seemed really excited. He, as he, he says this, he's looking at the, the vials and he begins casting a spell on them to identify them as we cut over to that petting zoo as Sakura and Seto, you guys are, are currently in there, one sec. Be another one of these staff members standing at the door and you can see that there are a number of these um, chitin glass enclosures along the, the sides but I'll put your tokens down now as hopefully everyone should be able to see when I just put the two in Can everybody see the map? I mean, assuming it's loaded. Um, watching the stream. Oh, there, there, there we go, there we go. Yes, now I can. One last thing, and then, yeah, as you guys walk in here, you'll see the this museum staff just nod politely to you and welcome you into the room, and you can see that there are a number of creatures inside these enclosures, but, oh, sorry, uh, I'm getting noise across over here, um, you will see that the main attraction that this red carpet is sort of leading towards, there is a massive dragon skull in the middle of the room that seems to be on a big pedestal. And yeah, it is it is one of the largest you may have seen in a while. And yeah, let me know where you would like to explore. There are a number of enclosures here. Um uh, should probably look into like every one. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, but for uh, game purposes. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Um, start at the one at the south, I guess. Mm. 
I'll just be following Sakura around and working with her since it was her idea. Okay. Yeah, so as you guys, you do some explorations, you you see in the, the first one, uh, it is actually empty, the first enclosure. As you, you look inside, you try and see, you know, you're not sure if it is just empty or if you just can't see the, the animal that's inside. Um, but when you look down at the, the label, it says Zenoga. Ooh, that's, 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 that's interesting. That's real interesting. She, she turns to the person and asks them, what, what happened to this one here? Oh, nothing happened, ma'am. We just haven't gotten one yet. <laughs> And we've got a few hunters out trying to catch one, but unfortunately, no luck as, as of yet. If you'd like to be put on the mailing list, we can let you know when one arrives. But we have got, well, I mean, if you'd like to see, we have just gotten in the head of Tiamat, quite a, quite a rare one indeed, and he seems very excited by the main display. Ah, thank you, thank you. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll look by ourselves, but thank you very much for the offer. She's starting to worry a bit for Australia, uh, but she'll, she'll move on to the next one. She, she just contacts Sessa telepathically and says that she hopes that they don't find any Zenoga in Australia's blood tests. <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know if Sessa knows what Zenoga is. Oh, uh, Australia became one. <laughs> yeah, a huge I wasn't, honey badger. I wasn't but... here. You did see Australia yeah, yeah, in that yeah. form um, when you woke up, so that that's still a pretty new thing for you. You saw her revert back into Australia, but I think until then you probably wouldn't have realized that that's who it was. It could just be a new high level magic, you know, with magic users, you never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she she explains that Australia was that like that thing that she was when he woke up. That's that's a Zenoga, and she became one. And oh. it's 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 a new thing for everyone, honestly. Seems a lot of stuff happened. She sighs and nods. <laughs> Indeed. As you hear, say this, you hear a thump against the glass of the next enclosure, and you look up and you you see a dinosaur that looks like it looks like a a raptor of of some kind, but larger as as it is just it it seems to have just like rammed the glass and is now walking back into its cage, swinging its tail, and you see it is seems to be getting ready for another run up. And the plaque underneath this one says Azerian Raptor. Okay. Pepper is just taken aback and just shocked, even though she's not showing it. Like, never even imagined things like that existed. Yeah. I think Sokka is also shocked. She also got a fright from, like, the thump. She feels bad that it's, like, the trap thing. I mean, can't really let them loose. Um, so as you make your way over to the next one, you can see that this this enclosure seems a little bit larger, um, as it is two windows in one, but there are two plaques. It, there's some water on the one side, and it goes to more like a jungle type environment on the other side where in the corner it looks like there's actually a a little shelter for whatever creature is in here and as you're trying to peer in to see what's in there um you can both give me a perception check as you are standing at different windows so you'll you might see different things okay so uh Sakura, you kind of look into the water and you can see that there are a couple of fish swimming around in the water, but they just look like regular sort of quippers and things like 
an easy catch that you could get anywhere around here, any any river really. Um, but they are probably fresh water. And Seto, as you peer around the little shelter, you see a humanoid figure just sitting curled up against the, the side of it. And it looks like, as you're peering over with the 25, you can see has got pointed ears and it it looks like there is a, a man with pointed ears just sort of sitting up against this little hut in the corner. I'll quickly just call Sakura and just ask, Do you see that? What the fuck is that? I thought it was a, a wildlife. Why is a human, a human a creature there? Sakura would like to look closer at it, uh, at that, at the at the dude. She she's also like what the fuck? She's she's looking really. She's this is weird. She she also looks at the fox at the fox to see like what it says he is. Yeah, the the plaque says um, Elven shapeshifter. June? I think. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean that could mean just like an an elf that <laughs> that learned polymorph one day, or it could mean a changeling. You're not entirely sure. the um, The information on this plaque seems like they they don't actually have much, but uh, yeah, it just says Elven shapeshifter, and it looks like there's just an Elven dude sitting in the corner. The f- does he see us? His back is turned to you, and he's just sort of looking into the corner of the enclosure. Uh, Sokka turns to the dude and is like, "Why are you keeping like a person in here?" Oh, don't, don't let him trick you. That one, uh, he's wilder than he seems. I promise. Fucking bastard! And he just, he like shakes his head and goes back to whatever he, scroll he's writing on. I almost want to try and get this dude's attention. But, like, I, I, I feel like it would be very patronizing to do so. But she also, she looks assessed and she's like, I mean, he might be wild, but I mean, do you think it's really right to keep a person in an enclosure? I mean, can you talk to him? She'll contact him telepathically. Say, okay. say, hi. Um, <laughs> she says hi. You see him, like, look up, like, kind of twitchily, like, as he kind of looks over his shoulder, and then he, for just a moment, he looks over and sees the two of you, and then looks back into the corner, and he goes, piss off, leave me alone. Why are you in here? I, the, she, she's saying this telepathically, of course, like, she doesn't want this random person. That person over there says that you're wilder than you look, but I don't really know if that's true. Um, but I don't think it's right to be keeping a person in an enclosure. He just stands up and he he turns towards you, and you see him stand. He just he looks. Um, he looks pretty much humanoid, but as he turns to you, his face shifts into that of the face of a tiger as he just like roars at you and and he goes, "Well, is that what you want then? Fuck off! I said leave me alone!" And he just he he ducks into the the little hut in the corner and he moves in there. But you just saw his face sort of shift into a tiger-like face and back to an elf again as he. He gets in there. From what you can see, I mean, this dude could just be like a druid or something. It's 
it definitely does not seem it's right to be keeping him in there. Yeah, this is specific. She she contacts him telepathically again and says, "Let's that doesn't mean you're any less of a person." She she looks to set and contacts him and telepathically and says, "Do you, should we should we try and get him out somehow?" <clears throat> I don't want to leave him here. I don't think that trying to let someone free in a city large as this one, when we just went to trial, is a smart idea. I guess we can talk about it if, I don't know, we can find out more, but I mean, if there are thousands of people not really doing anything and they're keeping them in, probably has a reason to it. We just don't know which one. I think we might not be able to help him now, but maybe we could come back in like a month or whenever. But I this isn't right. Seto, with your passive perception, you also notice that the enclosure he's in, this doesn't seem like it's just glass in front of you. This is definitely heavily reinforced, um, probably by magic, but it looks similar to the glass cases outside that this is Titan glass in front of you. It's the same kind of glass that they use in on Anaki's Titan when you fought it and like couldn't teleport in it seemed to block a lot of magic. I think that getting him out is gonna be a lot bigger problem. And I mean we might think it's wrong, but you know, something that is right for us might be just wrong here and always work vice versa. I think we should just probably find out more about it before we even think about doing anything. After all, we're only here with to visit. So. Let's see what they have in store else. And we can come back later with the crew. Yeah, she, she nods and she decides to leave the token keys. And she'll go and look at the, the next enclosure. Um, yeah, as you as you start making your way up, you see there is another enclosure with sand in it, and you also don't see anything in here, but the plaque says sandworm, and you realize that a couple of the sort of ripples in the sand are probably concealing a creature, but you can't see it at all. Uh, Seto, the one that you're looking at on that side is... Oh, you see this one has got um, a bunch of magma slugs that are, are going around and you can see that there's there's like a, a snail, there's a couple of worms, there's just some weird like creepy crawlies in here. But there is also, it seems to be temperature controlled in here, like it's, a, it's kept hot in there. And there's something quite appealing about going in there. There's something strangely appealing about these bugs there's like something primal within you that they just look delicious <laughs> wait what the it's Dude. it's a combination of being a phoenix and a cat you're like ooh like try it <laughs> yeah. but also like ooh bugs got to hunt that shit well the the pack um explains that these are um bugs from the the elemental plane of fire and quite possibly fed on by creatures from there but read into that what you will however as you guys are making your way up to the top wait, 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 is... the last one the last one the one next to Seto let's see that last <laughs> one <laughs> And then we'll go look at the skull, I promise. I promise. I just want to know what's in that, that last one. Yeah, the last one. Uh, <laughs> Sakura, as you walk up to that one, 
there just to quickly check. You see the a, a, like oddly familiar face of a goblin sitting in that one. Um, a very familiar looking goblin. You know it can't be the same one because you definitely killed the fuck out of the, the one that that got iron. But this one is the spitting image. And he's also just sitting there grumpily, but he's like in the middle of the the enclosure. It's much smaller, this enclosure, and he's just sitting on a rock. And as you just walk up, he just flips you off. And he's just like giving you this deadpan expression. She's gonna like hurriedly look at the fox see if this is like some kind of thing that does illusion magic or something. And you look down and it just says a goblin. <laughs> it's dire uh, cheese. Fuck, she, she calls Seto over and says telepathically, This is the goblin Iron was in when I killed him. But he's kind of. I, but he can't be because I turned that one to mush. Accidentally. So what? So what do, what do you. Do you see something different in there? It's just a, a goblin? Do all goblins look the same or something? <laughs> yeah, most the, of them. The guy in the. the like. Museum staff guy, he just goes, Oh wow, and you were judging us for keeping someone nice. <laughs> <laughs> and even the goblin in the cage goes, Telepathically. Can <laughs> Seto speak back telepathically? Yeah, I can't. No. <laughs> I feel like Seto just sounds like a crazy. <laughs> yeah, so this people. guy is, is judging Seto right now, not Sakura at all. <laughs> She's just like, wow, this tabaxi comes in here and suddenly gets all racist about goblins. That's weird. <sighs> and now we know why people don't like the pet people in Skyrim. Can I do like an insight or something? Yeah, you can. You, you can take a closer look at this goblin. You want to make real sure it's the same one. My cat. Yeah, as as you look closer, there's you're like staring at him and and kind of expecting a response, but there isn't one. He does look like eerily similar, but after what Seto is saying, yeah, you you don't think you've actually met that many goblins. To be fair, there's a good chance that they do just all look like this, though it is. It's weirdly familiar. Like maybe this is his twin brother or something. She 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 kind of mentally, telepathically asks, "Hey, did you by any chance ever like um make a deal with a dragon?" What What do you mean? Uh, no. You You know a dragon that wants to make a deal? I'll make a deal. <laughs> Oh no, you just you just look very, very familiar. Did you have like a, a twin brother? Yeah, did, you know my brother? And he gets, he gets up from the rock and he presses his hands against the glass and like his nose is like as big as his whole head but it's just pressed against the glass and he goes, Do, do you know him? Do you know where he is? Is, is he okay? You fucked up. <laughs> Did you kill the goblin? The goblin is the reason Sakura killed her friend. <laughs> so you know how she killed oh. Ayan? Like accidentally? You know how she like the first person she ever killed was like her friend? Um it was that goblin's fault. Um but anyway. The goblin um, had it coming. Don't be goblin mind controlling I, I, Sakura to to I, I don't holy really, shit. I don't I don't really know how to say this, but he he passed away. I'm I'm really sorry for your loss. And I offer my, my deepest condolences. 
damn it. Damn it all. He goes, all right, fine. And he goes into the corner of the room, and you see he kneels down and puts his hands in the air, and he goes, almighty crack, I give you my soul. I will give you everything you need. And he starts bowing down and, like, chanting in Goblin, and he just looks like he's just lost his mind. I'm I'm really sorry to hear such bad news. Uh, have a nice day. <laughs> she goes to this <laughs> how to like break the news to people like how do you go and to someone and be like Dem. yo you know your brother's dead Dem, like... I, just, I just want to say thank you that's it <laughs> uh, I didn't actually realize that you were back until like five seconds ago so I'm glad you were just... there to see we can <laughs> actually it's gotten too late to actually get into that now but maybe next next session uh, okay. I've been back for a while. Uh, I, I joined like just before you're introducing the uh, shapeshifter. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we can say that you've uh, waltzed into the room as well at this point as uh, Elias and Estrella. You guys are, are having your, your blood tested and you see him holding up both of these vials to the light and you see one of them begin to crackle with energy and then the other one seems to be diluting itself and he's going oh interesting i suggest you stay right where you are and he's just looking at them very carefully as they seem to be transforming <laughs> did i mention i was an orphan so i have no idea when what my heritage is <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that might have been good information. But as as you guys, we're going to sort of leave your scene frozen there for, for now, for tonight, because we are running low on, on time a little bit. But I do want to stick in this, in this exotics room for just a second more so that you can... I feel bad ending it before we've actually looked at the last thing in the room. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll go over to the skull now. <laughs> I think we can do it next time. Let's do it now quickly. Let's do it. Sure. We're we'll right at the end. This will be a nice way to end it. As June, you, you walk in to see this goblin currently trying to sell his soul or something, you know. 100% sure. <laughs> but he looks like he's yeah. he's got the warlock vibes. He's like... Yeah. He he's just like looks around and he goes, Thank you, Lord and he just starts like sprawling <laughs> shit on the walls and trying to set it on fire and it's it could be quite comical to watch, but as <laughs> the rest of you what do you do? Do we see June coming in? We probably do, right? Yeah, she, oh, she's oh. walking in just as you guys are looking at the goblin finishing it. I'll walk to June and just like whisper to her. If you look behind me, there's someone very much like you. Like me? <laughs> I assure you, there is nobody like me. Well, you can go and see for yourself. She'll walk up to the uh, the glass, uh, the what face? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can give me a perception check to try and see. He has this beard back in his hut, but. Okay, perception. Twenty-three. Okay. Yeah. You. Um, you can see that now now that they've walked away he seems to have come back out of the the hut there's obviously not that much room in there but he's moved to the opposite side of the the enclosure and he's just sitting at the edge of the water and he just seems like he's sitting there bored but you now realize that the fish in there are basically his food source yeah i just look, i look to set and just you know give the expression of uh, you know, what the heck, what is this, <laughs> type of thing. Yeah. As oh. you look over there, June, a shadow moves across your body, 
and you see something swimming through the, the back window and you realize that that back window is in fact, um, it's not a window, but it is, it's like an aquarium that there is a massive water tank and you see something draconic swim through it, like something serpentine, but definitely it, the way its scales are moving, it looks much like a dragon. Okay. And you guys standing at the that head there in the middle of the room will see the plaque reads Head of Tiamat. Uh, and this, it says donated by, a, and there is a name there, which I don't think you would recognize. It says Zelo Fi. And there is, yeah, this is, probably the the item i'm trying to remember if hinaga actually mentioned it but this was the item that they were so upset about that they've been there's been a lot of controversy about um is this latest addition to the, the museum i'll just turn to sakura and ask her uh, you read a lot is it really possible that they killed Tiamat? Managed to retrieve her head. Well, I mean, Tiamat has five heads. Oh. Wait, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Tiamat has five. It's like she might only have four now, <laughs> based on what's <laughs> in front of you. Um, I don't know how someone managed. Oh wait. Fuck, was it Aquila and his Vorpal Sword? It is the only way to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, meta-wise, that's what's sitting in front of you, but... Uh, yeah, Sakura but would characterize, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't really know how someone would be able to just cut off her head permanently. Yeah, and Seto, yeah, from what you know about... Uh, Tiamat, or like the, the stories that you've heard, even if Tiamat was killed, like the body would disintegrate more than likely or reform somewhere else, or like that's not a permanent thing, even if they did manage to do it. So, this is a there's a good chance this is a fake, yeah. <laughs> what is that thing? Can I can I go closer to the aquarium thing and see that thing? Yes, you can. As you approach, you see this large creature. Definitely looks dragon-like, but actually, you know what? My explanation of this is never going to be as good as what I can actually provide with these specific creatures. You see this, and I'm going to post it in the chat. It's not copied properly, one sec. But this is where we're sort of going to wrap things up. So if anyone else wants to do anything in here as I'm trying to find this link, you can do so. Discord chat, right? Yeah, there we go. I've just sent it. This is the creature you see swimming around inside there. Yes, I've stolen it from a video game, but that means I can steal the cutscenes too. Don't worry, good DMs steal stuff. <laughs> the cat great monster hunter, so I <laughs> like I think I really should, because the the designs of these monsters are too cool. I had to use them. And that's, come on, some tabaxi look like one. Let's be honest. Oh, the poor Patagos. <laughs> you know, they have to get a bar. <laughs> the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the poor cats. They're not cats, they're Palicos. Oh. Uh, they're like, uh, what? Go ahead. 
it. Come on, come on. Okay. okay, okay, they didn't die. I'm fine. They're getting a ball. Phew. <laughs> this is the aquatic dragon. Yeah, it looks like some kind of a bubble dragon. From what you can see, it is swimming past and it sort of blows bubbles at you, seemingly with its breath weapon as it comes past you, Sakura. But um, yeah, it doesn't seem. It, oh, man, you, it seems like it would like a cup of tea. I, I mean, <laughs> this seems like the kind of dragon you want to be friends with. It's all pink and it's got like feathers basically on it. And there's. This is another time where it's like, why Why is this thing in a cage? This is sacrilege. She, she, she uh, communicates telepathically. Hi, uh, would you like some tea sometime? I don't know how I'd get to tea, but I really would like to get you some tea. I mean, I'm, I've been told I make the best tea. You see, the creature does not actually respond to you telepathically. You're not entirely sure. You know that many dragons are fully intelligent and capable of speech and everything, but this creature doesn't seem to respond to you like that. However, it does swim back around and up to the glass, and you just see this imposing figure of this gargantuan creature just swimming up to Sakura and just staring down at her. But it, it seems like it either wants to eat her or... Uh, it really does want to take you up on that offer, Sakura. But that is where we're going to end tonight's session as this Miz Mitsuzune, I think it's called. Uh, Mizutsune, of course. Water, right? Anyway. That's pretty on the nose, but that is just sitting up there in front of you and the curator seems to have just discovered some sort of elemental blood in Elias and Australia. And we will pick oh. things up there. Sorry. Yep, your your blood was diluting itself, my friend, um, and has turned to water. <laughs> oh shit! Should have gotten the expanded package to turn to wine. Elias is a water elemental confirmed. Pick up.